this could Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to the Yala podcast. Uh, and today uh, we have uh, Mohammed with us. Uh, so uh, uh, and Elik is mm -hmm. my co-host and my name is Alon. Yeah. And Elik, you want to explain a bit about what this podcast is? Yeah, like uh, me and Alon were to uh, um I don't know what to call ourselves Israelis. Uh, we live in Israel. We have an Israeli ID, <laughs> but we're anti-Zionist, so we have the with a problem with the term Israeli. And we have a podcast that we did that we started talking with each other about like our vision as a, of a one state solution as anti-Zionist Israelis. Yes. And we understood that the conversations, that we really want to have conversations with people that we share a view with, and especially with Palestinians. We thought that it will be like the most, because we want to create a kind of a dialogue that is like breaking the walls of like separation and and do you want to add something? Uh, I want, uh, please, uh, Muhammad, to tell uh, to tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. Uh, sure. Uh, anything so, you want to say? my name is uh, Muhammad Haraj. I uh, grew up. I was born in uh, Jerusalem. I, it's, I say Jerusalem, but I was actually born in Kalendia, which is, if anyone knows, it's like a place outside of Jerusalem, but still considered part of Jerusalem. Uh, I'd lived... love to hear about uh, this place and uh, what it's like growing up there uh, later in the conversation. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm actually from, I'm not from there. I'm not from Kalendia. I'm from like a small, I'm not from, from the a city that's uh, adjacent to the city of Ramallah called Al Bira. And um, I just happened to be born there uh, for whatever reason. My parents were there at the time. Uh, but um, yeah, I was born there. I very early on, my parents had already been living in New York for about 16 years uh, prior to that. And so they were just there over the summer. I was born there and I moved back to New York. Uh, I moved to New York up until I was about eight years old. And then they brought me back to uh, Palestine to live uh, in uh, Ramallah, where I stayed there from the ages of, I'd say, like nine to um, 17. Or 18, I was probably 18 at the time. And then I, I've moved back to New York since then, since I've graduated high school. And I go pretty frequently back to Palestine. I go, I used to go every summer. Now it's looking like every other year I go for like mm -hmm. long periods of time, probably two months. And yeah, I, I live in New York. My I'm a teacher here in New York. I'm a public school teacher. Uh, yeah, I've been living here for the last, it's been 10 years now. And yeah, that's my life right now. Awesome. So, uh, I, I just want to ask you, we will uh, discuss this uh, much more uh, later in the conversation, but I just want to ask you, like, uh, what do you think of what Elik uh, said, uh, the dream uh, for uh, one state where uh, there is uh, peace, justice, equality, freedom for all? Listen, uh, I completely agree with it. That's not something that's not something that's exactly along my lines of thinking. I don't think... Um... I don't think um, I'm, I'm, I'm not really of the opinion that we need to get rid of people in order to live together peacefully. That's my personal opinion. You know, it depends on who you ask everyone, every Palestinian, you know, you hear the, you, you always hear with the Jews, they say, you know, you hear two Jews arguing, you, you'll hear three, three opinions, two yeah. Jews, three opinions or something like that. Yeah. I feel like Palestinians are very similar in that way, where it's like everyone's yeah. opinions about things change yeah. depending on the yeah. time of day, what have they eaten before, and that sort of thing. So yeah, like I, me personally, that's something that I've I feel like I've consistently believed in. I don't think um, I don't think um, anyone should I don't think anyone should leave. That's my personal opinion. Everyone's gonna have their own opinion. Um, my in in a perfect world, in my perfect world, I think. Uh, we could all just live together, you know, happily, you know, a, a secular democratic country that, you know, uh, addresses both of our needs and, you know, obviously takes into account the history that we've, uh, that, you know, Jews have gone through as well as Palestinians. 
and you know flourish together in that way but obviously you know history is a lot more complicated there's a lot of things that have happened you know i, I do think the I think the founding of Israel was very problematic. I think a lot of things that happened after that were prob were uh, problematic. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to take account for. And, you know, I, my, in, in a perfect world, that's what, I would, that's what I believe. We don't live in a perfect world and far yeah. from it, especially when it comes to this uh, the, the yeah. case that we're dealing with right now. So it's, uh, I don't, uh, I, I, I hope that, you know, we can at least have a path uh, forward that could reach this ideal. I'm, I am, I don't want to say pessimistic, but I am a little pessimistic that we're going to reach that place anytime soon. But I do believe that it is a goal, the only goal that is worth achieving, uh, or worth pursuing at this point. So, yeah. I just want yeah. to say, it, feel to, it feels to me like you almost summed up uh, our podcast. <laughs> yeah. You, you just said everything that we say. Uh, there are problems here. The situation is very dire, and uh, the the cult of Zionism is very insane. And mm -hmm. uh, we need to find a way to to deal with this situation. And and the faster we do it, the better. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that that's the faster we do it. And th that's the thing. It's like uh, a lot. The thing is with this situation, we're in. Everyone, like I said, everyone has their own uh, opinion and their own beliefs that affect their decision making um you know uh i think one thing that palestinians have one thing that most palestinians have in their mind is that you know it's very clear that like okay we were the victims of the occupation we're the victims of all this you know uh settler colonialism that started off in 48 this extension of uh, you know european colonialism that is this is not what you have to convince Palestinians to accept. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, yeah, it's like everyone knows this and it's just like, uh, it is true. Like, I don't deny it. It is 100% true. But also it also kind of, especially like Palestinian society, I believe it's uh, it's bred a lot of, um, it's bred a lot of, uh, I guess, I don't know what word I'm looking for exactly, but sort of this like solo thinking which obviously you know it's extremely ripe within Israel society you know they, they got their own thing where they got their own thing going on with like you know feeling you know feeling like they they are privileged they are not privileged they are um victims um pri uh, they deserve the land and whatever everything that they yeah. did is uh, uh everything that they work for is towards that yes and just closing the window for a sec yeah yeah no because uh, there is uh, maybe a noise here that uh, we don't uh, we don't want <laughs> Okay, so uh, yes, please. Uh... Yeah, no, no, no. I was just gonna say, yeah, that like uh, that you know, that, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to say this in a way where it's like, oh, it's like you know, both sides. You know, everyone hates that like yeah. enlightenment yeah. centrism type yes, talking of point, we where it's just like, too. you know, right, where it's just like, oh my god, you know, like these two people, they just can't get along, and only who knows what's gonna happen. You know, it's I don't like talking about stuff like that because it's very obvious. Like anyone that's been there knows what's going on and it's yes. you know it's just like re really there's not really much unless anywhere. they're brainwashed unless they're brainwashed like unless happen? they're brainwashed exactly right yep and so it's it's uh it, it, but regardless it's like the solution is the the best the most reasonable solution is to um try to get people to understand each other and you yes. know have the the crimes of the past to be paid for and everyone who needs to be held accountable needs to be held accountable for. We agree. And that, like that, all these things need to be taken into effect in order to, you know, that we can move forward together. Who knows when that's going to happen? I don't know if it's going to happen now. If it's going to happen ten years, twenty years, thirty years, we don't know. But like these are like I feel like these are the necessary steps that need to take place in order for us to, you know, live in a functional uh, society. Yeah. 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 So we we what what we are doing now, I believe. Mm -hmm. is one step, one small step in this process. I think every time uh, uh, Jews and Palestinians talk and uh, and think about this uh, vision together, I think it's one small step, and uh, many more step will, steps will need to be taken. But we are trying our best. Uh, all of, all of us in this uh, conversation, we are trying our best, and we want to encourage others to do the same and to try their best. No, absolutely. That, that's what it is. And, you know, it's, yeah, go ahead if you, you wanted to move on to something else. To say. Yeah, um, <laughs> I just had uh, thought about this 
like holding people accountable, you know, mm-hmm. that because uh, maybe because many people tell me, you know, that I am just criticizing my own side and I'm not criticizing the Palestinians. Yeah. And I'm saying like, it's not true. I want to take both sides to, uh, let's say, judge who mm. judge the crimes that everybody did, you know. Right. And Ruth will show you, you know, that one side did ethnic cleansing and did, uh, you know, genocide and occupation about for like, like if you want to bring stuff to justice, like that's why, you know, I, I feel Zionists don't want usually to yeah, have yeah. the justice discourse because it would put us uh, not in a not in a good place. But, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's unfortunate truth about the things. It's uh, it's really there is there is no incentive for the Zionists or the average uh, Israeli to want to pursue anything like that because it's if anything they're losing their position in society. Yeah. They're going to be losing their, you know, their place in power, and that's true for all you know privilege uh, colonial projects that happen throughout yeah. the world. You know, yeah. and when it comes to you know, let's say like slavery in America or the French in Africa and like Algeria and stuff, none of these yeah. people that there is like, if you think about it, if you, if you, if you are the one on top, the, other than being righteous and being, you know, the good guy and being moral, there is really no incentive. And like, to be yeah. fair, I don't like a lot of humans would rather just, you know, be on top than try to be like just and moral or any of that sort of thing. So, so I, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, so my question and uh, 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 like, how do you think that we can um, avoid this obstacle or or go through this obstacle of Zionists? Really, uh, they, they they will not. I I, st- I try to speak to a few Zionists today on Facebook, and yeah. I try to say a few things, and I remembered how they never listen to anything to anything. Okay, so yeah. you are saying this is because they are in a place of privilege, and I agree. How do we take that privilege away? And I will start by saying that that what Eric and I, I think, are trying to do, and Eric, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we're trying to uh, uh, like put pressure on uh, the, the, the states, the forces that support Zionism, like the yeah. US, like Europe, and uh, places like that, and through grassroots movement uh, that, that put pressure on the governments. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Do you have other ideas, maybe other things that we should do? Listen, I've in my in my day, like I, I used to I used to uh, like do debates and talks with like Israelis a couple of years ago. Yeah, you can probably go on YouTube and like find some of those videos still up there. But oh, really? I said debate designers. Oh, yeah. yeah, send us the <laughs> links. Send us the yeah. links, and we will put them in the description of the video. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'll send them to you. I'll send them to you okay. for sure. There, I, I did them like it was during COVID. It was a couple of years ago. I was like, I don't know. I was like 24 at the time. I'm like 27 now. It wasn't like that big. It's not okay. A big difference, okay. but still, like, um, cool. yeah, cool. it was a weird time. It was during COVID, but I, <laughs> I had a lot of free time, so that's mm-hmm. that, that's what I ended up doing. And listen, it's like I, I talked to a, a wide breadth of like Zionists, post-Zionists, uh, you know, secular Jews who, mm-hmm. who are like American Jews who have their opinions on what's going on, and also you know all, all sorts of people that have like different opinions and things. That it's just like um, I I think re- realistically the the only thing that will change the state of affairs that we're living in now is if the whole world, if Israel reaches pariah statehood and where nobody wants to associate with it anymore, like yeah. what's happening at Gaza right now, which it looks like Israel is going on its way. Like what on... happened in South Africa, for example, I think. Exactly. You know, literally, that's exactly what I'm thinking about. It's just like, the, you, you need to have situations like that where it's just like, everyone's like, okay, listen, all the countries are like, okay, this is too much. We this can't... is too much. We... Yeah, this is too yeah, much. Yeah, we, we, we can't put our weight behind this. We can't put yeah. our weight behind this. You know, 30... 1,000, 32,000 people in Gaza die now. Still, doesn't seem like that's enough. Maybe once we reach 60,000, something will happen. But um, yeah, that, that's realistically, that's the best thing. And where it feels where you got to put them in a in a desperate situation where it just seems like, okay, listen, we, we can't survive without, you know, international, without international, yeah. uh, without international help, without international community. Yeah. Yeah. Then we'll be forced to, you know, I guess, settle for whatever, you uh, 
decision that, that is. And uh, realistically, I think that is the only solution. That is the only thing. Um, I think USA needs, to, I think the US needs to put pressure. And um, really historically, anytime you really look at, anytime the Israel stops doing something, it, it's always, always, always when the US um, said, okay, that's enough. Okay, so here's, you know I mean? here's another yeah. question that I have for you, please. Yes. You're a US citizen, right? Yes. So what do you, uh, let's say that uh, you could speak to all U.S. citizens and all U.S. citizens uh, heard your voice. Mm-hmm. What would you tell them that they should do to affect uh, change, uh, a positive change in this land? 100%, I think it's uh, voting. I think voting in the small local elections, I think um, messaging their senators, messaging their city council members. Oh. I haven't been doing that work. I haven't, I haven't been doing that work um, myself, honestly. But I am familiar with a lot of people that have been, and they've been, you know, writing to their, you know, city council members, pressuring, uh, pressuring them to drop support for Israel because, for whatever, even for whatever reason, uh, these like small like municipalities in like all over like America, they they like sometimes will have uh, pro-Israel stance, mm-hmm. pro-Israel stances for. I mean, like you're, you're like in charge of a small town. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why you're like uh, having an opinion on like this geopolitical issue and they're like this taking is, sides. Uh, it's, it's really interesting how they were, the Zionists were so good in understanding the system of the US. They just understood how it works, how you need to get it in the level of, you know, like local. Uh, yeah, local <laughs> elections. And it's, it's, yeah. it's like it's in everything. And you'll be surprised, like uh, even... A lot of the funding that comes from, like, people talk about APAC a lot, right? People talk about yes. APAC and say, like, APAC is, like, you know, they're, like, funding their the reason why the U.S. supports Israel. But it's not, APAC's probably actually, like, one of the smaller organizations. It's really? not super small. I thought it was they're, a good player. It's a big, it, it's it's a moderate-sized player. Really? I think a bigger player, you know who are the biggest players? Can you take a guess okay, who are the biggest tell players? Us. Tell us, uh, if you probably already know, it's, it's uh, organizations like KUFI. Which is, uh, I think, Christians United for um, Israel. Are so those, a lot of are these those evangelists? Like, yes, oh, the like evangelists, evangelists, the evangelists are actually oh, bigger. No. Are actually bigger than the, you know, that's. Oh what... yeah, one hundred percent. Like, think about how many how many Jews are there in America? There's like how much how much do they make? How much percentage are Jews? First of all, and then break them down from the Jews. How many Zionist Jews are there in America? So fucked up. And I keep oh, saying, yeah. I, you know, when I talk to my Zionist friends, like I try, and I should tell them more. Listen, it's not, they are not for you, these yeah. guys. They're, they're not, just, man. They're not. Yeah. Literally, the Jews are, like, I remember I read this in one book. I forgot who, I think it was the Rashid Khadi book. But the, literally, they see Jews as, like, characters in their play. To, yeah. Uh, you Maybe know, like, you should just, do you, do you like, uh, can you, like, tell us, what the evangelists believe and uh, just so people know if people are unaware of what 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 this group wants to happen yeah they they, they want basically they they want um all the jews they want the jews to be in israel because you know the messiah or jesus needs to yeah. jews need to be in israel when yeah. the messiah comes back and then once messiah com- when jesus comes in like once establishes kingdom on earth he's going to uh you know forcibly convert everybody and and in the world to turn war, to Christianity. Right? And all the Jews will either convert to Christianity or die. You know, they're, they're just like a poor character. Yes, yeah, so Armageddon, basically. That's what it is. It's, it's, a, just it's like, a holy war. where Yes, it's just like an apocalypse all sinners, fantasy. All sinners, yeah. including all Jews, will die and go to hell or something. Everyone, like that, even, right? even maybe even Catholics will be thrown in there. Anyone that doesn't believe in their version of Christianity uh, yep. is going to go in hell. These are the people. These are the ones that fundraise a lot. These people fundraise so much money for Israel. They fundraise so much money for Israel. They fundraise trips to Israel. There was, I saw, um, I saw this young gentleman. I don't know if you guys know uh, Greg Stoker. He had a, I forgot one of his co-hosts. Can you repeat name. He was like, uh, Greg Stoker. Greg Stoker, okay. He's, uh, you can find him on Instagram. He's like a US, uh, I think he's an ex-army uh, ranger mm-hmm. um, who was very pro-Palestine. And he has, I remember he had a co-host um, with him that was discussing how he was an evangelical Christian that went on trips uh, with his church, or I don't know, with his church or with somebody, with some whatever, to Israel. And he went there to, like, you know, study the Bible, like, learn about Jews and stuff like that, yeah. how it relates to his Christianity and such. And it's a big movement. It's a big movement. Even I'll tell you this. I'll tell you an anecdote. When I was a kid, 
uh, when I was a, a high school kid, and I went to a school in Palestine where we were instructed in English. Mm-hmm. Um, like it was an it's called the American School of Palestine. Where where in Palestine? In uh, Ramallah, in Ramallah. In Ramallah, okay. Yeah. Um, and so uh, that we're instructed in English. So I was, most of my friends, most of my classmates, most of the kids in the school, we, we spoke to each other in English. Mm-hmm. And then we're walking the streets of Ramallah one day as high school students. And these, uh, this, these two white ladies were there. And they heard us speaking English. And they're like, oh, my God, are you guys American? What's going on? Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we're American, but we're Palestinian. We, we live here now, you know. And they're like, she's like, oh, cool. And then she went out on this whole, she's from North Carolina, you know. She's from North okay. Carolina in America. She went on this whole spe- spe- spiel on how, like, oh, uh, you know, like, I love being here. I love being in the Holy Land, you know. And she started talking about Jesus and Christianity yeah. and stuff like that. To a point where it was just like, oh, okay, all right. You know, and they're, like, very, they're there, like, for very, like, religious, like, reasons. Yes. And obviously they have, it's like, it, it, you can tell, like, you know, that she's probably hiding her, <laughs> her support for Israel, Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, while she was in Ramallah, but like she was. So what? What did you think about these ladies? Uh, what did I think? Well, well, I was a, I was like sixteen years old, and I'm like, why is this lady talking to me about the picture, the big picture? Yeah, yeah I didn't know. What, I didn't know what yeah, she was okay. like. I'm like, first of all, why is this white lady here? <laughs> why is she? Why is she so? Why is she in Ramallah? Yeah, and yeah. Then, okay, you were just. What, what is she? What does she want? What yeah, what, what, what's, what's, which I don't care. You know, it's awesome. You know, it's like great. I like people visiting. You know, it's it's great. But at the same time, it's like, oh, or like, do you have an agenda? Like, what's what are you trying yeah. to do something? Like, what's what's the deal? Trying to convert us to all become Christians or something? So, please, but that's how uh, they. That's yeah. That's those please, are the typical Israel supporters that you'll find in America. So please tell us. Uh, like uh, this leads me to like uh, where uh, I want to uh, uh, hear about your uh, childhood growing up in uh, in Palestine. Tell us some, what, what is it like? Because I think most uh, Israeli Jews just don't know what it's just like. No, no. And you know, we can compare our experience, like, you know, because I grew up in Jerusalem too. Yeah. And what is a Jerusalem for, like, a, for a Jew? The distance. The, 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 the distance, the distance is what is it? It's like two kilometers? What is it? Yeah, it's like yeah. nothing. And nothing. It's really, like, it's really, we we're yeah. attached to each other. Yeah. B- like besides the, the big wall that's, you know, <laughs> that's separating us. Yes. But um, yeah. yeah, the th- the thing is, uh, let me. I'll tell you this. Like, you know, as a child, like I didn't really leave Ramallah until I was. I didn't leave like Palestine. I didn't leave Palestine and go to America until I was eighteen. So I spent most of my time like as anyone like would be in their neighborhoods. So I was in Ramallah, and if you know, if uh, I don't know if uh, you, you gentlemen know, but like uh, or anybody else listening to this knows that like uh, Ramallah is relatively safe compared to other places in the West Bank, uh, especially the villages. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the seat of the Palestinian Authority, you know, Mahmoud Abbas and stuff. He doesn't okay. live too far from where I live either, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's relatively calm. There's relatively... It's like, is this yeah. like part of the deal that uh, Mahmoud Abbas has with, like, Israel? Yeah, 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 of course. The, so, yeah. like, uh, the, like, they're very, they're very careful. Uh, it, because Israel and the Palestinian Authority, uh, they have... Uh, I and forgot what, what it's called. Think, like, what, yeah. do, do you think this is problematic? Problematic? Um, oh, I mean, politically, I mean, politically, yes, no one likes Mahmoud Abbas. Not many people okay. in Palestine like Mahmoud Abbas. Okay. Um, they, they see him, there's a bunch of people that have a bunch of different opinions about him, but I feel like uh, my the, the average perception of him is that he's a uh, Amil, which is basically um, a collaborator. Yeah. you know okay yeah uh, okay that's what i thought i i just wanted to make sure that my impression that i got uh, the impression that i got but do people in ramallah for example like are there more people who are for him because he provides this piece uh, for a uh, relative piece for ramallah listen when you ask me questions like that it makes me think it's just like really it depends on the day and it depends yeah. a lot of palestinians are also afraid mm-hmm. of uh openly speaking out about uh, the Palestinian Authority because it could get you in trouble. Yeah. Um, if you like uh, like speak out about Abbas publicly, uh, you could get in trouble. You could be arrested. You could be considered, you know, a Hamas agent or something else or whatever, you know. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. And that's the thing. People say, you know, oh, like the West Bank, it's like, you know, there's like Hamas there. They don't realize that like Mahmoud Abbas and like the Palestinian Authority, they try their best to 
gather people, anyone that supports Hamas, and they torture them. They torture them. They beat the living so really crap just out of them. Arm of the Israeli government. It's just an arm of them, especially. Oh, it, they're like I remember who said this. Uh, Michael Brooks, may God rest his soul. He the old old commentator on um, okay. Sam Seder. He said it the best. He he said that they're subcontractors. For is, Israel, excuse me. So, they're they're subcontractors, oh so they're like. Uh, that is so like. No, that's literally what they are. They're, the they're, they're just they're, you're just showing Israel's dirty work, but you got a Palestinian face uh, behind it. So instead of yeah, like yeah. you know Israel having to go uh, chase around um, you know kids throwing rocks and doing all this stuff, you got the Palestinian Authority. They'll do it for them. And and, and in return, you know, say, they get they like get to Oslo. Oslo was about creating this in a way, right? Yeah, the Palestinian Authority. Yeah, just like babysitters, just uh, yeah. babysitters for us. You know, they don't. Uh, uh, I mean, some people might say, "Oh, the fact that you know Ramallah isn't controlled by Hamas, that means we're not getting bombed like um, Gaza." Maybe that's a benefit. Okay, sure, but I mean, know, I can like... be sympathetic to this argument. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like it's 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 like, uh, will I tell you that I'm? No upset? one wants to fucking die. No one wants to fucking die. Exactly. No one wants to get their fucking you know home destroyed and raided. And even though Israel is Israel, the Israeli army does plenty of times because there's settlements all around Ramallah. You have Beth El, you have Kohav Yaakov, you have uh, yeah. what else around? You got a lot of settlements. Uh, they do it intentionally to separate Ramallah, like to make. Uh, like the... So here's the thing. Yeah. So actually, so you have. Uh, like you have Ramallah and Albira, which is like one big land mass of just like for Palestinians only. Mm -hmm. But the surrounding villages around um, Ramallah are all littered around with like settlements cutting off access to it and stuff like that. So it's like um, you have like Beit Il or you have like stuff like Pasgot, which is like on small settlement on top of it's like in the middle of the Bira. It's uh, on top. Of, it's like on the hilltop of uh, Jabal Tawil. And a lot of these places are, uh, they kind of act as ways to just control our movement or just see like what's going on. There's like monitoring stations that, you know, that there used to be like, uh, there used to be Jordanian army bases. Then after the 67 war, Israel took over and then they started putting settlers in there to yeah. people settle, settle there. That's and so like, the, it yeah. like, you know, and they say like they use civilians as human shields. And, and what are you doing exactly? You know, the no, but, that, but that's, but that's the goal. That's that's the goal. That's the goal with like anything, anything. It, 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 this the story of Palestine. The story of like Palestine is the same story a thousand times over in human history. Yeah. In northern in Northern Ireland, the British did the same yeah. thing. They uh, yeah. uh, they flooded uh, Northern Ireland with a lot of uh, Protestants, a lot of mm -hmm. like British uh, British people, Protestants. So they can say like you know when the IRA was fighting back yeah. against them, they're saying oh like or they. Or they decide when they were when the north became Northern Ireland became majority, you know, Protestant. They're like, oh, okay, we want to be part of the United Kingdom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. they were the majority there now, and they ended up seceding. And that's the case with like that's that's the case with Palestine. You know, it's like that's one, another reason why Israel can't bomb the West Bank like uh, they're doing the Gaza is because the uh, West Bank is filled with settlements. How much? 400,000, 300,000 Israelis live in the West Bank? I just had a really dark thought. That, that's yes. why Sharon took the settlers out. Fucking shit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Gaza? I never thought about it this way. That when you take the settlers out, it gives Allah's you the possibility easy. to do the, whatever the fuck you want. There. It's the fucking easiest thing to do now. It's the easiest that. thing to do now. What, what are you going to do? You just and drop then, bombs. Whatever. They're all Palestinian. It doesn't matter. And then, and then... What do the Zionists say? They say, we stepped out of Gaza. Yeah. This is their justification for, you see how this works in like all the, the different, it, this is so disgusting. It's so it's crazy, man. Clinical. It's crazy. It's so and that's the thing. That's what people need to hear. But I don't, for whatever reason, uh, you know, the media is really good at like making sure this stuff doesn't come out. But it's like the most obvious, like, so, Excuse my language, the most it's obvious like it's a similar <laughs> thing to what I told you today. Today yeah. I had the thought that I told alone about like they're attacking now Al Shifa Hospital, right? Yeah. And they say like we fight the fighters inside. And I thought today, 
but you're attacking a hospital. Of course, yeah. there are going to be fighters who are going to fight you, you know, like... To try to protect the hospital. And then they you're can say... You're attacking the hospital. And then they can say, you see, there are fighters inside. We have to kill them. We have to kill civilians. It's like... But this is the way Zionists invert everything. They are the aggressors and they present the people protecting themselves from the aggression as the aggressors, just for protecting themselves from the aggression. What is this? What is yeah. this? And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, depending on what happens with Gaza next, once, like, let's say they disengage and, uh, yeah. let's say once Israel gets out and they do whatever plan they want to do with Gaza, I don't know if they're going to reoccupy it or not. I mean, it's hard to tell. They want but, to reoccupy uh, They want to, they want to. They there want are to people that are saying that they, well, who knows? It's not, because at the end of the day, they're not going to get rid of Hamas and uh, Hamas is not going anywhere. They're, they're, they're yeah. going to stay there. And if anything, the... it's going to be probably more expensive for them to try to reoccupy it and then deal with more like whatever comes up after Hamas, you know. Um, and whatever comes up inside of Israel, which is uh, really uh, very volatile at this point. Yeah, it's very volatile right now. Yeah, the state of Israel right now is like right now, the, the current state of the government is like almost in shambles. It looks like it's about to crumble. Yeah. Which, you know, like, which is, who knows what's going to happen, depending on, you know, like right now in the U.S., the way the U.S. is trying to um, back out of, um, you know, like looking bad for supporting Israel is saying, yeah. oh, you know, like this is Netanyahu. And Netanyahu is like, oh, he's yeah. he's the issue. Like once once Netanyahu is out, this stuff's going to stop. And that's what they're trying think, to sell to the American public. I truly think that yeah. we are at a tipping point where there is a possibility to put enough pressure on the U.S. government to stop supporting Israel or at least to demand some really, like, like to really demand things from Israel yeah. for once. And I think that, like, if the U.S. does not feel that Israel is worth uh, holding on to anymore, within, like, a few weeks, everything is different. This is what I think. That's the thing. I think I think at most, I don't think the US will ever completely abandon Israel. I don't think that's gonna happen, but they will at some point say, like, listen, you guys gotta yeah, you gotta you guys really gotta give these Palestinians something. Because yeah. the thing is, no one really cared about Palestinians up to this point was because Palestinians really have nothing to offer the world. Like they don't, they're like, you know, like Israel, okay, Israel to America, you know, they have a they have a they have a military base in the Middle East that helps them monitor the Levant and, like, you know, strike things and, yes, you know, they get intelligence and stuff uh, from so. Israel. There are the a lot of don't really have... attacks that the IDF performed on Syria, Iran, whatever you want. Really. All that stuff, so, exactly. Uh, it's a tool to show dominance, yeah. I think, also. Yeah. Like region. a finger in the eye. Yeah, yeah, like we're here. We have a... Uh, a presence yeah yeah we have a presence in the middle and that's the thing palestinians they're just a stateless people that you know they've been wronged but they don't really okay they, what, what do they got to offer it's like they, they got morality to offer like hey we've been done wrong we've been done but, dirty but like i, I want to ask yeah. you this i want to ask you this i think yeah. like ever since october 7th and the things that uh, transpired uh yeah. the interest in the palestinian cause has risen like significantly and very positively. Like oh it, yeah, it began very, very poorly, of course. But like within a few weeks, I think it, the, the, there is a lot of positive interest. Do you feel this uh, as well? Uh, does this make you more optimistic? What do you think about this? Yeah, that, that's actually a great question. Uh, I'll tell you this: I went down to a protest in Washington D.C. back in um, I don't know when it was. It was like probably like four months ago. I don't even remember okay, what it was, yeah, what yeah. month it was. But I went to a protest in DC and uh, you, you won't believe how many people were there. There were probably close to like 300,000 something wow. people. 300,000. I'm saying, th I'm saying 300,000. That sounds like too big of a number. I don't think that's 300,000. It's probably, okay. but it, it was a huge, it was, it, was, biggest, it was six figures. It was probably six. Yeah, yeah it was definitely six figures. That's or, a lot. That's a lot. Six figures? Maybe six figures. We'll see. I'm not sure. I'll what, probably have to go look what up. Other, but... What other political issue brought yeah. six figures of people in the U.S. to a protest? I don't know. I don't. Think yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I I got. I got to see the actual numbers because I don't want to be held on the six figures number. But like, it's like. But it was. Let me tell you. It it's was. Big. Like, there was. It was, crowds, big. It there was, was a big. sea of people. It was a huge amount of people. Sea of people, and yeah. they were protesting, and it was so huge. You know, at one point, I was like. Oh man, if like a stampede could easily happen over here, you know what I mean? If we but get fifty it, people in Israel, we we feel lucky, okay? Fifty. Yeah, yeah. Okay? No, I mean, 
listen, yeah, it's yeah, I I can see, I I, I can see that, but at the same time, like you know, and I'll tell you another funny thing about that. It's like when we we drove down from New York to Washington D.C., which is like a four hour drive, and then when we we're driving back after the protest, we stopped in um like a little food station, like food, like uh, I forget what they're called, some center in Delaware, whatever, and we stopped there to go get some food before we go back to New York, and we saw in the news they had Fox News on. And you wouldn't believe what was on there on Fox, on the Fox News screen, on the TV screen. It was like pro-terrorism rally wow. happening in Washington DC. Happened in Washington DC. Wow. It was like pro-terrorism rally happening in Washington DC. Wow. But And people see this lie; they they don't believe it's like they used. To. I mean, do Republicans see this lie? See this lie? No, they don't. Listen, I just, I, I, just, I just saw a report. I just saw a report that said um, 50% of U.S. citizens do not know who died more, Palestinians or Israelis. Really? You're, you're, very, you're, you're underestimating how um, ignorant dumb yeah. the average American is. <laughs> so, you, so, no, but know, let me ask you this. Among Democrats. Yeah. Democrats, listen, there's a whole bunch of people. The thing is with a lot of liberal people in America is... They don't like to they don't like to Get be involved. controversial they don't like to be controversial they're just like oh you know like listen it's it's, it's bad good. it's bad what's happening on both sides you know what yeah. i mean it's like they'll, they'll be like in the centrist they'll be like oh it's really bad and you know maybe it's lack of knowledge maybe it's just they don't want to be perceived as anti-semitic or whatever so who but are the people who are coming to the protests who are there a lot of uh, a lot of left-leaning activists a lot of progressive uh, activists a lot of um socialist organizations are organizing I'm really these... impressed with how yeah. the left has uh, made like a, a, a small still small but mm-hmm. significant comeback in the US like, oh yeah yeah a lot of these people right a lot of people like you'd be surprised a lot of these or- a lot of these protests that you see in this in the US in like um in like like New York New York listen has probably had non-stop protests for like you The last since this all stuff started non-stop 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 and um all over the u.s there've been protests there's been people that have been like doing all kinds of things like closing the roads on the highways closing bridges in san francisco all all types of things been going on in the u.s like they, they they're putting pressure they i don't know uh, aaron bushnell uh the air force yes, uh gentleman course, that a, burnt himself in front of the embassy yeah But, but also very significant it's had a okay, tragic they, they've been uh, they've been actually people have been camping there in front of the Israel embassy where he uh, self uh, mosolated at cuss work or whatever emulation emulation uh, yeah so yep yeah. and he uh, he they've been camping there because they can't I don't so, just so they don't remove yeah I don't, I don't know it's the first time this it's like the first time I heard this term and then I heard it like 60 times in two days. Exactly. No, 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 that's literally what it is. Poor and and every Poor, time I yeah. do it, I have like this image and it's so horrifying. Yeah. You know, it was a very, it was extremely brave act for him to do. And, you know, it's, and also it horrifying. was barely so horrifying at the same time. And this contradiction, I cannot contain it, you know? No. Yeah. And it was very, barely covered in the news. It was barely, yeah. it was probably one day news cycle. And then after that, it was done. But even people Fox have been news? standing there. Fox people news? have been standing there camping there since then. So they don't remove the Palestinian flags or any of the flowers or shrines they have for him. Uh, was he covered on Fox News? I don't know. All right, that's a good hmm. question. I do not know. Um, I probably saw probably one news agency that covered it um, twice or maybe two yeah. or three. That's, that's all I've seen. And I've seen it like mentioned once and that was, it was never brought up again. Uh, the U.S. government, surprisingly enough, did not. make a statement about it at all they, even though he was a a, a, a u.s a, air force man he was a airman yes he was an uh, active duty was he like i actually don't know i actually don't know that i actually don't know that information um i know that he was in the air force i don't know if he was in the reserves or what was he yeah yeah but you know that's the case and uh yeah it's, it makes me strange. think you know like how because you know like we the As the Israelis and, and like Zionists when they they always we're, we're, we always get this thought that we are the victims and mm-hmm. everybody is against us and I think yeah. like in this conflict it's weird because it's so clear that all the powers at B are supporting the Israelis there yes. and, and kind of it feels like it's conspiring against the Palestinians in yes. a way. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes back again, like geopolitically. Yes, Palestinians yes. have nothing to offer, so it's like, why, why, why argue for something like that unless it's just you're just doing it for like you know trying to be moral or you know, and uh, and that's the thing. It's just it's just like that. That's the thing. It's just like uh, there's a lot of you know powers that be that want um, Israel to exist in the current state that it is, and so there's going to be a lot of support, a lot of money going in that direction, whether it's from, you know, lobbyists, lobbies like APAC or, you know, KUFI or any of these other evangelical organizations, you know, and politicians or that, you know, for whatever their ideology, they want to support Israel. So really it's, it's unpopular to be support of Palestine. And, you know, it's a, uh, it's a lot easier to, it's a lot easier to support Israelis since they look, uh, since, you know, there's a couple of um, Ashkenazim mixed in there, you know, a couple of like European Jews mixed in there. So it's like, uh, yeah. it's like, oh, my God, they, they look like me. I can understand when they suffer, but yeah. like when it's like a brown kid or something. Yeah. That's why I get I get treated. I get treated nicely a lot by like a lot of Zionists because they think I'm Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, they, they I don't know. You, it, it, uh, you don't look any different from like most Israeli guys that I yeah know. you know that's the, right. that's the thing yeah until until you hear my name until you see until yeah, you hear my yeah, name. Yeah. Then, then all, all all that goes away all that goes away yes yeah. Uh, yeah but so um, let's please uh, go back to what it's like uh living in uh like growing up in Palestine and maybe tell us some uh, crazy crazy experiences to to maybe spice uh, spice things up for the audience you know oh man crazy experiences man yeah yeah I'll tell you <laughs> um so like listen growing up in uh, ramallah like i stayed in ramallah very barely have i left it mm. um as as a teenager or as a child uh i uh a few times we took trips into israel like we are allowed to go into israel if we get permits yeah. and sometimes the school was able to get permits to take us on field trips to uh when we we're like i don't know when i was like in ninth grade or something they took us to yaffa and I have a, a uh, really stupid yeah. question yes what kind of identification uh do you have like what what kind of document oh uh, hawiya i have a, I have a, I have uh, a green hawiya, right yeah i have a green hawiya i got a green hawiya not uh this means bring me the documents yeah. right yeah It doesn't matter you even with my American citizenship now that doesn't it doesn't mean shit. <laughs> so yeah, but what kind what kind of documents do you have as a, as a Palestinian I have a Palestinian passport and I have a Palestinian yeah. uh, identification card my uh, okay. that, that's a hoot my identification card is um, it's a uh, green so that means I'm like it's from green. the West Bank okay. yeah it's from uh, the Palestinian authority yeah I feel I, I just want to say you I'm glad that we're having this conversation, but it also it also makes me feel a little bit ashamed of myself that it took almost thirty seven years for me to do these conversations and ask these stupid questions. And I think it's a testament to what the Zionist cult is like, the fact that it took me so long, even yeah. though I think i try I try my best usually. Mm-hmm. and like, yeah. fuck, like, fuck, I don't know the basic things. I feel so stupid. And no, it's okay. I, I mean, you don't, you, don't need, you don't need to beat yourself up for it, but the thing is, it's just like... I don't like, know, I feel <laughs> bad, man. I just feel bad. Listen, it is what it is. Listen, yeah, I, it I, is, I, is. I feel bad for a lot of things too, man. I feel bad for, like, you know, what happened to... What's happening to the people in Gaza and I'm living... Yes. Like, I'm here. Yes. I'm here talking. I'm talking to you guys from Good my time. very yeah. decent place in New York, talking to you about how it feels like to be a Palestinian. When, like, in fact, like, I... As a Palestinian, I have... M- The amount I have suffered for being a Palestinian is not in any way conceivable to what the people in uh, Gaza are going through right yes. now. Yes. yes. Or what people that live in certain villages in the West Bank have suffered. You know, I feel I'm extremely lucky. Yes. And I'm speaking from a huge, 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 huge place of privilege to even. But I feel like this privilege has given me like, uh, yeah. like a look. Um, be able to like learn about everything that's going on and the different you know things that are happening yeah yeah that's what we feel also like we understand yeah. we're privileged and we yeah, can we can have you know part of 
the privilege allows you to think because you don't have to on, only be fixated on survival, you know? So. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're fed, we're full, and on our free time, we sit here and we'll discuss, hmm, <laughs> yeah. damn, look at these ideas. It's kind of messed up. So that's that's really what it is. And regardless, I don't, uh, I hope this could, if this could change anybody's minds or like maybe like people can learn something from it. I think that's, I, I, I'm learning from this conversation. I'm learning so much. Yeah, so but I, 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 I'll I tell you. I, I'll tell you some of the stuff that I've experienced, like, as a Palestinian. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah. I used to go, like, in college, when I was in college, and um, I'm going to after college, I would go, I'd go a lot to, I'd go a lot to Palestine over the summer. And uh, at that time, you know, I'm 20, now 21, 22, 23, I'd have my uh, car, I'd have my family car, and I'd drive it around. Ramallah, I would drive to different cities, I'd drive to Nablus, I'd drive to Bethlehem, I'd drive to, you know, a bunch of different places. Uh, different places in the West Bank, obviously, because I can't mm -hmm. drive into mm -hmm. Israel. But um, there are different Palestinian cities in the West Bank. And yeah. I've had plenty of uh, close run-ins with the, the IDF. I've had times where I was stopped, uh, not stopped, I was not stopped, I was at a red light on the um, on one of the highways that connects, uh, that's um, that means like it's uh, both settlers and Palestinians use like Highway 60 um, that goes from like um, it goes from like Beit Il and it connects you you can go to uh, Neblis or the Jerusalem or any of these places from and uh, I was stopped at a red light around like close to Beit Il and you know a soldier who was there in his little like bunker thing that's like on the on, like the settlements he was like like for no reason, I looked at him. Box, right? It's yeah, box. little box, exactly. Uh, I just like looked at him, looked back, and looked at him. He's just like laughing. And he's like pointing the gun at me, just like fucking around with me. And I just looked at him, didn't pretend like I didn't see anything. And I'm just like, how old was this guy? I don't know. He could have been 25. He could have been 18. You don't know. I don't know. But, but like, young, young, young. I, Young guy, young guy who probably has been indoctrinated in his whole life, yes. knows no better, and thinks, uh, yes. uh, like, you're giving an 18-year-old guy an F-16, and you're telling him, these are your enemies, make sure they don't do any terrorism. Yes. And, uh, yeah, he, he has he feels in his full right to just, like, fuck around with you. Yeah, and, and you're, like in that. a way, you are the master, right? Because you have the power. and like, Yeah, yeah, you're the master. And uh, what am I? I? I'm a guy there. It's a power uh, trip, basically. Yeah, it's a power trip, and I'm there for vacation. And I was just like looking, I'm like, wow. So he's really just doing this right now. He's just doing this. And uh, I made me think, I can't even imagine what it feels like if I have to drive through. I'm going, I'm going to Nevis to go visit a friend. I can't imagine what it feels like for uh, someone to take this road every day to go to work and, like, yes. you know, deal yes. with this sort yes. of fucking around. And they're just aiming the gun, whatever. There was a yeah. bigger story that happened. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just want yes. to say, this story uh, uh, reminds me of a thought that I had about, like, Israeli sense of humor. Okay? And... The thing is that I think uh, Israeli sense of humor is not is not about actual humor, but about mocking people. And I think all of all of the all of Israeli humor is based on mocking people yeah. and mocking people who are weak for your uh, uh, sadistic enjoyment. And I think yeah. this is expressed now in what we see coming out of Gaza, all the all the uh, TikTok uh, videos that the oh, yeah. proudly proudly show the world. That they are mocking their victims. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, uh, it, it, you can make the argument because you know Jews have felt weak for throughout history yeah. that now they so finally in a place of power and now they're you know the bully becomes the bully type of situation doesn't make it any more right doesn't make it right makes it still makes it disgusting but at the same yeah. time you know it doesn't stop us from learning to know why something like this is happening exactly yeah. Uh, but yeah like uh, the, the the another situation I wanted to mention was one time I was. Going yeah. to visit my friend in Nablus and uh, was driving back and I don't know if um, how familiar you guys are with the West Bank but a lot of these cities like um, like Ramallah, Nablus, Jenin, all these places they all have uh, they're always like usually there's usually like a checkpoint yes. with a gate that like opens and closes whenever Israelis feel like if there's something that's happening they'll usually mm -hmm. close it and so people are just stuck in where they are and they can't move yeah, anymore. They want They're just to isolated. be able to do it on demand if they want. On uh, demand, exactly. And so, Especially um, on like Jewish holidays where they feel like there's a tension uh, in, in the air, so they will uh, close, close, close the, gate. the gates, yes, yeah. to, to these cities, exactly. And so I went to go visit my friend in Nevis. We had a fun time there. I went there with a couple of guys with three other of my friends from Ramallah. And on our way back, 
uh, on our way back, we were um, stopped. There was like a police checkpoint. Yeah. Not the not the army. It was the police checkpoint who stopped the car, and just think it was like at 1 a.m. or something. Is and, it like uh, military police? Is it my, my no, no 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 no? It was just it was the civilian police. It was the much civilian police. Civilian police. Okay. Civilian police. It was just normal police. Okay. Israeli police that like patrol the highways. They okay. took our IDs. They took our Hawiyas. They looked at us. There was like me, one guy in the passenger seat, and like three other guys in the three or two other guys in the back. Mm-hmm. And they took the our IDs. Nothing happened. Then they gave it back to us. And like, okay, you can go. I was like, okay. okay. We're driving, we're driving, we're driving. And it's, mind you, it's like 1 a.m. at night. And then all of a sudden, like, the cars that are coming in the opposite direction on the highway are flashing their high beams at us. Usually meaning, okay. if you're Palestinian, be careful. There's army. There's the army. They're stopping people. Oh, so you have, like, your own, like, secret code that you use basically saying just be careful like you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be careful yeah. you know what i mean yeah and so we saw one car pass by and do it and we're like don't oh, tell the zionists don't tell yeah them. i can i mean listen even if they, even if they know it doesn't stop it from happening they, they don't yeah, know, I know, you know. Right. yeah this is just some like stupid shit that i know you know it's not there was some real uh, stuff you know but like um so yeah and, the flashing lights and yeah yeah we saw one one car was flashing the lights And one of my, my friend next to me, who's like lived there his whole life, you know, he's like, uh, they're probably just, he's probably, they're just probably just fucking with us. I'm like, I was like, I was looking at him. I was like, Hey man, like, what do you like? <laughs> what do you think about that? Because I heard, I was like, he's like, Oh, don't worry about it. Two or three cars passed by. They're all doing the same thing. Mm. We're all like, we're all like, okay, shit. There's a change. There's, there's the army, the army, the army. We're like, whatever. This is the only road that we're going to take to Ramallah. We're not going to go through. Some yeah, other it's not like road. we can do anything, right? Yeah. We're like, we're like, fuck, we're not going to stop. You know, yeah. we, we don't do anything. We're chilling. We're fine. Yeah. And we, uh, we drove and we see the army jeep parked on the middle of the road on its side, like blocking the highway. Yeah. Blocking. Side. Yep. On the side. And uh, a soldier who was on foot, who was just like flashing his flashlight at us, telling us to like slow down, like move to the side. So that happened. We moved to the side and he lowered, he, we lowered down the window and he's like, uh, Hawiya, Hawiya, he wants the Hawiya, Hawiya, he probably said. And then I gave him the, I gave him the, the Hawiyas and he, um, he's like, okay, he's like, Muftuchot. I was like, Muftuchot, that sounds like Muftah, that sounds like key. So yeah, I was like, key. listen, this car is not, it doesn't, the keys are not, I'm like, I, I was telling him, I was like, the keys are in my pocket. Um, yeah. my, the keys are in my pocket. He's like, okay. And then he's like, get out of the car. And so I, I get out of the car and tells me he's like it is like take everything out of your pockets put it on top of the car take I take everything out of my pockets put it on top of the car and I'm just like what the fuck is happening I look I'm like this on top of the car my hands are on top of my car I look behind me and like about probably three four meters away and the opening goes like we're in front of he stopped us in front of a settlement uh, called Shiloh and okay. um, he uh, he there was a guy with an f16 literally pointing that shit right at me It wasn't like right behind me, but it was like, you could say like a, a few meters back. And uh, I saw that and I was like, I, I couldn't believe what was happening. The I started- The settler was pointing a gun at you or- No, not a settler, it was the army. It was the army, it was a soldier. soldier. Not a settler. I think there, there, were, there were settlers there watching. Yeah. There were settlers sitting there just how, watching. How did you uh, feel? Like you were more scared or surprised or incredulous or what? So funny to say, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't really scared. I was just like, I was like, Credulous. I was like, I was a little scared. Obviously, there was some level of scared, like scared. Yeah, was, because you, you know? don't sound scared when you tell this. So I was like, was he? Yeah, scared? because I was like, I was like, why the fuck are they going to shoot me? Like, I didn't yeah. do anything. Whatever. They're yeah. going to fucking shoot me. Like, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really think it was a real possibility that I was going to get okay, shot. Okay, okay. But still, the guy had a gun pointed. You know, I don't know. That's still pretty fucking yeah, know, that's something scary. to worry about. Even if he accidentally, whatever. Yeah, you don't know. But yeah. I was like, okay, whatever. And then I looked at it and I started laughing. Actually, I started laughing at the moment. And yeah. I was just like laughing. And he's they're like looking at me weird. They're like, oh, why is this motherfucker laughing? And it was like, uh, he was like, Are you, you drunk? You know? And yeah. I'm like, I was like, no, no, I'm not drunk. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not drunk. I'm, he's like, okay, he's like, what the fuck is laughing? They're like looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. And I'm just like, I'm just like, you know, I'm just like, like, what the fuck is going on? You know, I was probably from nervousness, I was laughing. Yeah. And then after that, they, they looked, they took all the Hawaiians, they had a little machine, they're typing in the Hawaiians, they tell me, like, open up the trunk. All they found in the trunk was, like, my uh, tabla, my drum. 
and uh, like jumper cables. Your drum? My drum, my uh, the tabla, the derbuka. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, cool. That's the only thing that was there. And then they looked at it, and then they looked at me, and then they were like, I was like, hey, listen. I started talking to them in English. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm American, what do you want from me? You know what I mean? And they're just like yeah. looking at me like, like they like they're not like they don't care about like what I'm saying. They're like young kids. They're like they're like eighteen year olds, like fucking children. Like if fucking you make... give them your U.S. passport, would that wouldn't that? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm driving a Palestinian car. I have a Palestinian passport. It doesn't fucking matter. I'm just like the rest. So uh, may, no... maybe some soldiers, maybe some soldiers will like think twice, maybe, but it didn't really seem like it made a difference. But they, uh, yeah, they did it. They made me like open up the trunk. They made me open up where the spare tire was, whatever. I think um, the police alerted the soldiers that, like, hey, listen, there's, like, four bearded guys <laughs> driving down at 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah. from Nablus to Ramallah and uh, ch- ch- check them out, you know, spook them up a little or whatever. And so that was it. They literally checked. They were like, okay, yeah, where are you going? Where do you come? What's going on? Whatever. Yeah. Answered some of the questions, you know, and then I got out of the car and we drove back. And that's a story that happened to me. I've heard stories from plenty of time where the army has come into Ramallah, you know, they, they're maybe kids are throwing rock at them and they, you know, soldier gets scared and ends up shooting or maybe on purpose, yeah. he ends up shooting somebody in the car. Yeah. I had a, a friend tell me that his dad, before he passed away, um, they, they were driving from one city to another and his dad is a doctor and also diabetic that when they, there was a checkpoint and yeah, yeah there, there's a checkpoint and stuff and uh, they uh, opened up his bag and they found his insulin machine to check his insulin because he was diabetic and they literally took it and they fucking threw it on the ground and broke it. Oh. And uh, they do that all the time. Like they, I've never experienced something like that, but I've heard plenty of stories from many of my friends where, you know, they just get humiliated. They'll, mm. you know, be told to stand around in the sun or, you Why know, uh, walk in they? the dirt with their shoes off and then you know they'll take your things and just break something you know whatever you know whatever they feel like they'll break and there's nothing really anyone can do about it and that's small things you know you can go on the news you can find much 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 worse things that have happened yes, of course you know there are so many stories uh, so many stories you know of people getting shot people you know, yeah but room. you know sometimes i want to hear how it is it also not in the big stories how sure Yeah. How it is like average as the average person yeah, yeah I'll tell yeah. you man yeah it's like listen you, you you feel like you feel like a second class citizen you feel like it's not even a second class citizen you feel like less than that you feel yes, like you're like like I don't know you're like an animal What or something, you you know? like, uh, just military control just a military controlled uh, area this is this is what it is and it's like uh, surveillance and and oppression and and humiliation and supremacy and just uh, abuse and mm-hmm. and and restricting people's freedom and just uh, this is like I I already knew that this was what it was but listening yeah. to it like from this personal like it makes it like it's undeniable uh, Alon, let, let, let me let me tell you alone let me tell you something yeah. they used to take us trips in high school to houses that were you like rocketed and like Birzit and stuff. They used to take us to like where there was one time, I guess someone from, um, they wanted somebody, so, so, somebody, um, so, somebody, I guess, I don't know, attack a soldier or something like that. And they wanted to go get him from his house. They, the army came to go pick him up from, from his house. I don't know if he attacked or killed or whatever he did. I don't know. And then he wasn't there. And his brother was there. And they're saying, they're like, they're like on the loudspeaker. They're saying, hey, listen, if you don't, If you don't tell us where your brother is we're gonna bomb the house and then they literally on like a, like an attachment to the the jeep that they had they had like a rocket or whatever the fuck and they just fucking launched it out of the house fucking killed him and they uh literally they took us as like I was like fucking like I don't know hold on I was like 16 15 they took us there uh, to go look at it and it's literally I'll never forget it man it's literally a house with like a crater like in the fucking like the, the top floor and And we're sitting there we're sitting down with his mom you know we're going down because it's like because the kid the, the the brother died and so we're sitting down with the mom they had like a funeral like sitting and uh you know they had pictures of him everywhere and they had like you know they had uh what do you call it? they had pictures of him everywhere and they were just like it was just like holy shit like damn this is serious and it's like it's like it's like fuck man like what's this thing that we're looking at 
and yeah and it's like usually like when you're in Ramallah you kind of get uh usually kind of like don't see that too often because usually when Israel comes into Ramallah yeah. it's um it's at night and they come they pick somebody up maybe you know they pick somebody yeah. up and they go away but usually you go to these villages where there's like um regular clashes with the settlers or with the or the the army yes uh they, they go through aggressive. so much shit that's it's more aggressive more much much more aggressive and it's uh yeah it's it's fucking it's fucking horrifying and it's just like you see this and it's just like you're like yep but like also at the same time as like a palestinian you're kind of there you're like yeah that sounds like yep that that sounds like something that would happen and okay you know whatever the, the shit's been happening forever <laughs> you know what Can i, I ask you something? so it's like it's kind of everyone's kind of numb to it can I, yeah. can I ask you a difficult question, maybe? Go ahead, um, man. You are telling me about, you are telling us about all these things. And I am feeling, I am feeling hate towards Zionists now. And yeah. I want to ask you, do you think the Palestinians could ever forgive the Zionists or be able to live with Zionists after all that has been done to them? That's a tough question, man. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'm gonna be real with you. Like me, me personally. Yes, you. Okay, you. Me, me personally. I would like to hope that they can be changed from their ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's that's the that's my crazy optimistic point of view. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I try to be a little optimistic because what else is there? You know, I can't. I can't, you know, just be, you know, I can't be a pessimist or I can't be, you know, yeah. you know, what else, what, what else am I going to yeah. be, you know? And the average Palestinian, listen, it's going to be a case by case basis. People have had their brothers killed, had their mothers yes. killed, had yes. their dads killed, had their cousins killed, had their, you know, we had uh, so many, like, a, everybody has somebody in jail, somebody, right? It's somebody like... in jail. My, uh, my uh, mom's first cousin was in jail. Uh, yeah. For a really long time, but this was because during the this was during the wars and shit, during the fighting and stuff, and um, you know, like um, yeah, it's just like you know, it's like I I I'll I'll be honest, I feel like the majority of Palestinians will tell you no, they can't like fucking imagine living yeah. <laughs> living with Linus. That's that's the realest answer I can give you. Um, I I I can't imagine living with Zionists anymore. You know. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's like, it's like, listen, like, that's the thing. It's like, once you tell people, like, what's going on, it's just like, uh, it's like, well, what what else are you going to think? It's like, kind of obvious what's happening. Uh, it's pretty obvious. It's very clear what's happening. And it's like, most people that have come over here, most people that have come to, well, not over here, come to Ramallah, and seen what's going on, and seeing what it is, they, they're like, oh, this is, this is not what I imagined it to be. I didn't really, it's crazy, like, I was in Tel Aviv 20 minutes ago, and now I'm in Ramallah, and you can notice uh, how the poverty how how more impoverished this place looks yes. you know what i mean yes of course of course and uh, uh, like ramallah supposed places. to be like one of the better cities so ramallah supposed to be one of the better cities but it's like yeah it's like hugely like you can tell like the difference between that and for example the settlements that are like right across like that you can see from your window from the window of your house yeah. settlements look gorgeous they're just like you know these like nice yeah. White houses with like yes. red roofing and, um, and you know, then you very know well they made. say look how developed we are compared to them. Yeah, you know we are. Oh like... yeah, no, that's that's what that's also what's gonna happen in Gaza, mind you. Like once they like, they get rid of that, once they they try to get rid of Hamas and they they like whatever government they decide to put in there, they're gonna be like, oh look how like these fucking like Palestinians they can't even manage themselves. They don't even know how to fucking govern themselves. They're like yeah. They're barely, they're so sub They need to be occupied or else. Like, what else would happen to them, you know? I, I, I had a thought uh, today. I told Delic, I think it's uh, related to what you said, that uh, yeah. the Zionists always said, uh, uh, always say, we built this country. We we came and we built this country up. And they, uh, the truth is that Palestinians built this country because yeah, that's true. all of the laborers <laughs> who built all of the houses <laughs> that the Zionists live in, and I mean all, okay? yeah. yeah. Uh, even, even the settlements, man. Also, even, even the settlements, also bro. Also, before the deal, <laughs> they destroyed so much of it. Yes, they destroyed, and then yeah. they made the Palestinians rebuild the, 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 the land for them. Exactly, yeah. And no, like, it's that, that, that's what it is. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nervous, Imagine that. The chutzpah. The chutzpah of these <laughs> fucking Zionists.
Yeah, man, what are you gonna fucking yeah, that, that's what it is. Like even like settlements, like even like the, the biggest hit, the biggest hit that a lot of these Palestinians got in the West Bank, the biggest hit was really in the economy, because all these Palestinians that live in like Ramallah or live in these vill- the villages around Ramallah or around Janine or around Kulkarim, around Kalkilia, a lot of them work in Israel as construction workers and that because they get paid yes. uh, a lot better than in Ramallah. They get paid a lot better than in like uh, the West Bank. And so a lot of these people, like who, who are these people? Who are the people that are building these settlements? <laughs> They're not yeah. Israelis. This is, this <laughs> maybe, is, maybe you'll find an Israeli manager. Irony. But... Cynical irony of fascism and occupation. Right. Yeah, and it's like you, you got Palestinians well because they get paid well, and you can't blame them. They want to fucking feed their family. You know what I mean? If they were told, if they were told to choose between yeah, exactly. a uh, two thousand, a two thousand shekel a month job or a uh, six thousand a uh, month job, what are you gonna take? Yeah. Right? Two thousand shekels. It's, 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 an, easy, it's an easy pick. If I had kids, if I had kids, and I had a uh, mouth mouth to feed. Yeah, I I know what I would do. Just you so know. you understand, two thousand shekels is around, let's say, uh, six hundred dollars. $600, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And, $600. And that, does it buy you a lot of stuff in uh, in uh, Palestine? No. And it, 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 my, my, mind you, like, yeah, like, like, think about it. Like, if you're like, imagine if you're renting, you have a car and you have, uh, you need to buy groceries and you want to once in a while maybe have fun. Because yeah, I don't think this can't do, do shit for yeah. you. You know what I mean? Like, 2,000 shakers can't do shit. And it's like, it's been, the, every time it has been 2,000 shakers for like, since I was a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the, the wages yeah. haven't gone up. Wages in the Palestine haven't gone up. And anytime there's like things happening with, um, anytime there's like shit that's happening, sometimes the PA can't even pay the public workers, the public the public servants, because uh, Israel will hold withhold money or yeah. who knows what the fuck PA does with money. Maybe they're just stealing it. Who knows what the fuck's happening? Yeah. But they'll. Like, uh, total control they have. Total control. And this is like people are helpless. They're like, okay, you know. And then you have people that they just don't know what to do. They're like, you know, this all this shit happened to them and they lost their jobs. I have a friend who has a, a store in Ramallah where he sells clothes and they used to, and they, they, yeah, they, he sells clothes and he's saying that no one's buying clothes anymore because, you know, people are worried about other things. They're worried about like food and like more important things. And like, you know, so people aren't really in the mood to go shopping and, like for fashion and shit like that. So it's, it's really tough. It's really tough. That's why like, you know, my, uh, my, uh, uncle before i left he wanted me to go to school in palestine he wanted me to go to college in palestine i told my mom i'm like I told my mother at the time i was like listen we if you want me to have a good future mm-hmm. we got to go back to america because yes of course staying here staying here isn't going to uh, it's very very it very much limits the mm-hmm. success that i can yes i, I can yes. get or the life yes. you know what kind of livelihood i can make do and you, hopefully, you, you know, still, my goal was, uh, that, yeah. Do you still wish yeah. to uh, come back at some point? And, and, but let's say, of course, yeah. You know, I you, actually plan, I actually plan on going in the summer, hopefully. Yeah. No, but I, yeah. I mean, I mean, to go back to live here. To go back to live here, assuming that we do make the situation better. Oh, yeah, 100%. I love it over there. All my, a lot of my friends are over there. Most of my uh, friends uh, are I, over there. I must uh, say, I would love, I would love. For you to come and to be your neighbor and to be your friend and to go have a yeah. drink together. One hundred percent. You are so so cool. And and <laughs> this is I I just need to say something. This is the the crux of it. They are yeah. protecting us from being friends with cool people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This, you, you, you can't. Are, you yeah. can't. Yeah. We, it, we, it, it, cool stops it. we want to be friends. We don't want to be enemies. We yeah. want to be friends. Yeah. We don't want this bullshit. Stop this bullshit. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I no, absolutely. Take this out. No, man, let it out. Let it out. Let it rip, man. It's <laughs> like, listen, I it, that, it's true. And it's like, like, it's listen, true. I'm in New York, man. We have. Yeah. I don't know if you know anything about New York. Uh, there's a lot of Jews out here, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, was... you know, I, I, have, I have a lot of Jewish friends and, like, you know, yeah. I talk to them about a bunch of stuff. And, a lot of the ones, I mean, obviously I'm Palestinian, so like the amount of the, the Jews I hang out with happen to be like left leaning too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like, so it's like they, 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 they're completely unaware about like the shit that's happening, and it's just like you know, you people like even in like even like in Palestine, like you know, if you're saying oh you're friends with like a Jew, they're like, what the fuck are you friends with a soldier? You're friends with a fucking like a fucking murderer or something? So the Jews, you know, that's like how New York, the Jews in New York are unaware of what is going on in Palestine. Some Jews are, or if they are aware, 
or if they are, because, you know, like there's all varieties of Jews. There's Jews that are just like ethnically Jewish that, you know, they don't really partake. They don't really care about what's going on yeah. in the rest yeah. of the world. You have Jews that are Zionists, that they go to like religious schools or Orthodox schools. And they'll, some of them, depending on the school, they'll teach them like, uh, like, you know, you got to stand up for the American national anthem. And then after that, you got to stand up for the Israeli uh, national yeah, anthem. Yeah, yeah. I and it's other than really, other people guess... have like left leaning, huh? No, I say it's very conf. Uh, if I would be would get this message, I would be very confused that you have two states that you have to be loyal to, and like, and it's I, and I think it makes a lot of anti-Semitism also because look, it's the Jews; they have another yeah. state. Like, yeah. you know, it's listen, a... it, it like, and this is something that's been repeated many times, man. Israel is like the largest perpetuator of anti-Semitism around the world because like they, they do everything. They do everything in the name of Judaism or in the name of Jews. Yeah. We're doing this because of Jews. Yes. We got to kill these dozens because of Jews. We got to do this because of Jews. We got to occupy the thousands because of Jews. And like if you're Jewish, you know, in America, you're just like, oh, what the fuck are these guys doing? You know what I mean? What the fuck are these guys doing in, in like name and like putting us at stake over here for like um, for all, all the things that's happening. It yeah. obviously, like, you know, they're saying, like, they, they'll say things like, they're saying, oh, like, criticizing Israel is anti-Semitic. People will say things like, oh, criticizing Israel is uh, anti-Semitic, or Zionists will say this. And it's just like, then why are you doing these atrocities in the name of Judaism? Why are you yeah. doing these atrocities? You're, why are you marketing yourselves as a Jewish state? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, we talk about it a lot in our podcast, that uh, Zionism is uh, is connected and to And Palestinians who grow under occupation think that all the Jews in the world wear your uniforms and carry guns. Yes, like, yes, like, because yeah, all the Jews that they ever saw yeah. wore uniforms and yeah. carried guns. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's what it is. Well, like, if I get, like uh, most Palestinians, and they'll say this, they'll say this, this, is how, this shows how anti-Semitic Palestinians are, is that they'll say like, like let's say the army is coming, there's like oh, a Yehud Jain, or the Jews are coming. Yeah, yeah. you know the, the the Jews are coming, and that's because who are the Jews to the average West Bank Palestinian? Are they you? Are they you? Are they are they a guy who's uh, working in a you know working in a I don't know like teaching or something or I don't know doing something else? No, they're they're soldiers. They're soldiers or settlers. Yes, yes. You know, these are the Jews that they see. These are the Jews that they see. And they're oppressors every they, day. They are oppressors. Yeah. They are oppressors. So what are they gonna what are they gonna say? They see a star of David. They see supremacist oppressors who mock you, who bother you, who uh, belittle who, you, who, humiliate you. Yes, yeah. who treat you like like scum. Invade who, your house. Yes, invade your house. Kill your brothers. Uh, who who do all bad things to you? Like never, never. Where? Let me ask you this: Did you ever experience yeah. kindness from uh, uh, Jews? Kindness. Yes, from Jews uh, uh, in uniform. In in Palestine. Yes, in Palestine. In soldiers, from soldiers? I've from had soldiers. a couple, like, I've, I've had a couple soldiers that, here's the thing, they'll, they'll joke with me after they find out I'm American. You know uh, what I mean? They'll joke, yeah. they'll joke with me them. after they find out I'm American. I see. You know, some of them will, like, you know, they'll be like, some oh, of them are actually American, York. right? Huh? Some of them are actually Yeah, some of, the, some of them are American. I'll tell, I'll tell you one story. One time, uh, one time a soldier stopped us. This was when I was even younger. I was like 21. The, a, a soldier stopped us on the way. We're going to them. And just put the laser on the car, told us to slow down, whatever. We slowed down. They started talking to us in Hebrew, which I don't know why they started talking to us in Hebrew. <laughs> because like we're Palestinian, they should assume yeah. that we don't speak Hebrew. Yeah. And then the, we're like, we started speaking immediately. We started speaking in English. And we we're like, oh, they're like, oh, they're like, oh, hold on one second. They're like, they, they like talk to each other for a little. Then they called over some other guy to come. And this other guy, this other soldier came and he's like, hey, what's up, guys? What are you guys doing? Where are you guys going? Perfect American English. Yes. Perfect American English. He's like, hey, where are you guys going? And we're like, oh, we're going over there and we're going to come back. We're going to leave. They're like, oh, okay. And then that, that was it. And then I was like, we're like, we're like, yo, that dude just fucking like that dude's fucking American. What the fuck? Yeah. Is he? yeah. Like he's out here. He's just, he's just doing this. Like when, like this is, look, look at this situation. There are two American people mm -hmm. okay and now they have both been transported to palestine and now they have different roles one is the oppressor and one is the oppressed <laughs> yeah. like and now one american is pressing another american directly like like by law <laughs> what the fuck yeah uh, 
it, it's fucking crazy. Like I think about it, it's just it's just like shit that happened. But it's like you really think about it, and like in the context of everything, you're just like, what the? You're like, what the fuck is this? Like, what the what the yeah. fuck is going on? Like, it's, it's the same crazy. language with the same accent. You both have the same like. Yeah. You you watch the same TV shows and stuff like that. Yeah, probably. Like, yeah. But, but he, he got the gun, and I'm sitting here in a car, like hoping he doesn't shoot me. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know. Do you know the activist so, uh, Miko Pellet? You know him like this. Uh... Miko Pellet, I've met him. I've met Miko Pellet. Oh, he, 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 he 100% does not remember me. And I've met him a couple of oh. times. He's a really, he's a really interesting guy. I've met him because he uh, comes to a lot of events that happen in New York. I used to mm-hmm. do a lot of activism mm-hmm. here too. And I've met him a couple of times. Miko Pellet, yeah, he, very, very cool guy. Very cool guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very. Yeah, like... I've, I've, I've even met like some of these. I've, I've met some of the... Um, The Tory Carta? Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. The, okay. The, 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 the Hasidic Jews that are very pro-Palestine. You know, you know the ones. You know who they are. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah they, they show up to the events too. Uh, mm-hmm. But I feel like the majority of the Jews that like, even I'll tell you this. I'll tell, you, you're asking me if I've ever seen kindness from Jews. Here, here's a perfect example that happened like in like this, this December. I went to, uh, we went, we had a birthday party for a friend who, um, you know, who, You know, he had his birthday and we, they took us to an axe throwing place where, you know, you throw axe, you throw axes okay. at like a wall and stuff. It's like darts, but with an axe, whatever. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, uh, we went there and, you know, we, we sat there, we ate, you know, we played for a while and I went in wearing like my, uh, kufiya, my hatta, the, the, you know, the Palestinian scarf, you know, I wear it. It was cold. It was December. I was like, okay, I wore it. And also, you know, I'd like to have like some of the. Uh, like bring awareness to the political situation maybe someone's gonna ask me something about it or whatever i don't know but i wore whatever reason i wore at the time and then i went to go pay for the time that we spent and the guy uh behind the cash register he was like yeah listen i'm not gonna he's like don't worry it's, it's on me and i'm like what's wow. up why he's like i saw your scarf and he's like i saw your scarf and he's like i feel as a jew it's my Maybe. duty to show support with, with palestine Mind you, I am in Williamsburg. Uh, th- uh, this place was in Williamsburg. And Williamsburg is a very left-leaning like neighborhood in Brooklyn, right? It's a very left-leaning oh, okay. neighborhood in Brooklyn. But there are a lot of these places, a lot of these people in New York, a lot of these huge protests mm-hmm. that are doing like these wild things, like chaining themselves to like <laughs> train stations. And, like, yeah. A lot of them are done by Jews. A lot of them are like Jewish voice for peace, which yeah, is a huge, 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 huge. It's probably like the largest anti-Zionist organization in uh, like of Jewish or anti-Zionist organization in uh, yeah. in America. Like, in the Jewish Voice for Peace is very, very functional. They're very organized. Yeah, they do a lot of work. In the last uh, six months. Very active. Very active. Exactly. They, like, pressured. They go up to these, like, politicians and they'll, like, ask them questions and be like, hey, like, I'm a Jew. Why are you letting this happen in, like, Jewish names and stuff like that? Which is, I, I fucking respect. I, like... I think they're extremely brave. I think they're very... They're extremely this, brave. This for, leads me to a question Jewish. that uh, we wanted to ask you. Um, yeah. As... Uh, uh, anti-Zionist Jews uh, and yes. especially we, we, we both are uh, we have Israel written on our passport uh, sure. which is the way we phrase it uh, so uh, how can we be the best allies we can be uh, to help the Palestinian cause mm-hmm. I think listen from my perspective it's literally working on the micro level as individuals mm-hmm. micro level you know talking to people mm-hmm. that you know may have You know problematic views and it doesn't mean necessarily here's the thing i'm i'm a, i'm a firm believer that people are more convinced to to change their ideas if they are if it emotionally affects them mm-hmm. if, they, if the person has no emotions then that's done you know what i mean yeah. but like you can argue and say you can sit there and argue this and from my experience you can sit there and argue and say Oh, look at these statistics and look at these graphs and look at this history and all this sort of stuff. And you can point out that stuff all day, no matter how true they are, it's not for the majority. You know, there's always going to be something else that they can yeah. point to and be like, actually, you know, it's because of this. It's because of that. Yeah. But if you can just bring attention to like the people around you to say, listen, in the end of the day, we're humans, we're people, we, you know, we, these are people, these are humans, they want to you know like we have to sit there and argue our humanity which is probably problematic on some level some people would say that we shouldn't even do that but i feel like it's still like you know i think on some level we do need to connect on a human level that uh you know these people that these are people that 
the majority want to live free. They don't want to be under occupation. They don't want to yes. be under oppression, and they're not going to change until that is done. Until they are treated like humans. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's. Uh, I, I feel just like that the, on a micro the, level. The, yeah. Just say the simple truth directly. This is yeah. what you you suggest. Yeah, basically, yes. Yeah. Simple truth. Say the simple truth yeah. directly. Not and to go into if, the 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 chaos of their. Uh, uh, Like culture, uh, you know, uh, mind, yeah. you know, yeah. right? Like you can, yeah. who can you show? Like who's very few people will you show them a video of uh, starving children, for example, yes. or uh, a person with their limbs blown off, yeah. begging and crying for help, you know, and no one's there to come save them. Uh, no, I don't know many people that can look at that and just be like, "Oh yeah, seems completely justified." Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that seems. Uh, that seems. I, I, that seems like they deserve. I'm sorry. It, you know what I mean? I'm sorry, Muhammad. I need to yeah. tell you that I've been following uh, a Telegram channel uh, called uh, "Terrorists from a Different Angle," and this channel has hundreds of thousands of followers. And this channel, uh, yeah. it. I, I need the audience to know. I need people to know that this is happening because this people cannot imagine that this that this would happen and this is happening. They show very graphic videos of Palestinian victims from Gaza and from the West Bank, people who have had their bodies dismembered, and they write yeah. awful, cynical, mocking texts about them, uh, treating them as food. Treating them as no, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the one you're I, talking I, about where it's like a a body bag and they say it looks like a shawarma, yes, or something is, like that, right? I I I I I put on my Instagram channel yeah, there are like a some, few uh, gross, very gross stuff. Yeah, but you know, and that's the thing with, with people with people like that, with with people like that, a lot of people that no, they're gonna have to have their will You know something. what I mean? They're gonna. I must tell you something yeah. because I feel what Alon says. Most of the people are, I feel, is not like this. When I post, uh, most of the people who worries me, it's yeah. like, because I share, you yeah. know, in, in my story, you know, photos of uh, starving kids in Gaza. Yeah. And I got into a conversation with a guy who writes me like, why do you share this? Do you think like... Like war is horrible. Like what can we do? You know. Yeah. So they so find... they do admit that it is horrible. Yeah, but then, but if you end up justifying it, and 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 you have an excuse not to feel emotions from horrible images, you know, and you can say, okay, what can I do? I shouldn't let it in. Like I feel people can choose not to ignore suffering, to justify, to rationalize it. And it's very sad, but that's... Uh... You, you, know, you, know, you know what you can ask? One question that you can even ask the Zionists, if you're a Palestinian that has been through all the history of what Palestinians have been through, what would you do? Yeah. What would you do? What, what, would, you, what would you think you would, the right thing to do as a Palestinian would be? The Zionists someone someone might say, oh, get rid of Hamas. Someone might say, oh, you know, something like that. But in reality, if you like... Put into context about how Pal- what Palestinians have been going through throughout time. Yeah. And I think it's pretty obvious, you know, yes. what the yeah. correct answer is, you know. Yeah. Yes. And it's just like those people, those people that are just like, oh yes, sure, I love it. Like in the end of the day, there might be just like you know, a lot of people on the internet they get really a lot of people are just like trolls and they just like love looking at gore and yeah. shit like that. I feel like those people. I feel like a big chunk of those people, once enough political pressure is put on Israel to change. They're gonna fall in line. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're gonna be like, okay, maybe, maybe we should just chill out. You know, maybe there's gonna be some psychopaths. There are probably gonna be uh, another chunk of psychopaths that are like, oh yeah, we should have, we should kill more of them. But um, yeah, you know, it's that's but, why. Listen, like, what are we gonna do? That's, that's the price you pay. Uh-huh. And after after it falls, suddenly you will discover a lot of Zionists that would say, "No, we were ag- against it." You know what? No, <laughs> <laughs> I was never on this side. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what's like the Nazis did. Israel? Like the Nazis did. Like the like yeah. many Jews. Like people do. Like yeah. most of people do. Yeah. They deny him in history. Yeah. They are part of the group. And they then deny. They... It was like, oh, I don't, I don't remember it happening like that. Yeah, I remember yeah, it very yeah. differently, you know, so, say something like that. We, we, we are talking now about uh, uh, Israeli society, but uh, I want to talk uh, more about the uh, Palestinian society. Uh, so maybe yeah. a little bit about like 
uh, Palestinian society like? What is it like politically? What is it like culturally? And uh, uh, one uh, question that uh, I wanted to ask is, uh, what is your favorite thing about Palestinian society and about Palestinians in general and your least favorite thing? And uh, uh, so what is also your least favorite thing? And, and we know favorite? that this is okay. a generalization, but still it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting- No, I, I got a lot of opinions of how society I'm not. Yeah. You know, okay, like, okay, so please- You know, I, as a Palestinian, I feel like I have a lot of, uh, I, th I think there's a lot to criticize about Palestinians. I don't, yeah. I don't think like uh, you know, <laughs> I don't think we're like fucking perfect, you know. <laughs> yeah, of or I don't, I don't think, I don't think that. Oh, you know that you know every Palestinian has the best idea and <laughs> like has the best yeah. opinions of everything. You know, one hundred percent no. Yeah. Um, so so wait, the first question was, what's my favorite thing or my least favorite thing? Or uh, what start was from where, before that? In which order you prefer? Yeah. Okay, let me. I'll start. I like to end on a good note, so I'm gonna start yeah, with okay, my least okay, thing. Yeah. With my least favorite thing, I think like, uh, I think Palestinians can be just very like, um, judgmental Judgment. of uh, their own people, and they're always the, they're they're always uh, there's always like a, a. A lot of times, even when you discuss about politics and stuff, if someone does not agree with them exactly in the way they believe, I think it's a problem with a lot of Palestinians is that if you they they don't know how to um, if someone does not believe in their exact vision of how they want things to be, they think that they are like traitors or they think that they are stupid or they think that they are dumb or they think that they are wrong, and it ha it's uh it's a yeah it's a very um, mm -hmm. it's a very um, I don't know judgmental very like short sighted way of thinking i don't think that's the stakes like are high. it really depends but like it's it's understandable stakes, because because the stakes yeah. are so high yeah at the same time you know there's like a, a lot of these people are like people that also like are not like suffering too much either you know what i mean they're not like you know they're, they're, they're also people from place of privilege but i feel like hmm. from their point of view they're just like you know the, 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 they'll they'll talk big game but like again like they'll you know whatever they'll, they, they they really just it, they really just you know flow with the with the wind blows but i think that's just something about humanity in general um mm -hmm. and, and society in general i feel like um i don't even know like I, I i definitely i definitely do have a lot of gripes that i have with like palestine society but it's uh i don't know what, what else what else would there be okay I, i'll get I'll, I'll i'll see if i think if i think of something else i'll come back to it but like for things positive. that like Give I like about positive. okay something positive about positive society. I really like I really like our sense of humor. I really like yeah. our sense of humor, even yeah. like despite like you know like shits happening. You know like when like people are like 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 things are like horrible things are happening. There's always someone like willing to crack a joke about something that's happening. You know what I mean? Yes, you know the Jews um, used to have uh, uh, a very good sense of humor because they had like this. Like dark, way, dark they humor. need to uh, dark humor deal with the darkness in yeah. some way. You're not gonna cry. You're gonna laugh. And it's literally that. It's, it's literally that, this, man. Uh, it's, position. Exactly. Now, now, yeah. now, now, we're getting the comedy points, or like the dark humor points. Yeah. But it's so. Um, this is my dark humor. You see, this is. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. You know, like it's like I was watching a video right now of like a soldier because sometimes like they'll. Uh, Let's say if a, a kid was like throwing rocks or he was like tried like tried to throw like a Molotov cocktail on the tank. Sometimes sometimes the soldiers, the IDF will call them on their cell phone and they said, Hey, if you don't turn yourself in, if uh, if you don't turn <laughs> if you don't turn yourself in, we're gonna arrest we're gonna arrest your dad. And then he was like, Oh, he's like, uh, arrest my mom too with her with him. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. He's just walking around. He's like, if you don't turn yourself in in five minutes. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm gonna arrest your mom. He's like, okay, arrest my dad with him too. Whatever, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know. Oh, and so it's just like, fuck. it's just like, it's just like, you know, there's always like cracking jokes about like random shit like that. It's just like, even when I tell that story, you know, when I tell that story of like, uh, you know, when I got stopped and they, you yeah. know, they held me up and stuff. When, usually when I tell that story, I'm usually like kind of like laughing when I'm talking. I'm like, yeah, oh my god, it's so very yeah. crazy. Like, you tell it as a funny story. You you tell it like a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's like what else? What else are you gonna? Like, what, what like, I'm not gonna be like, oh man, like oh, you know, like yeah. it's not. I don't think that's a way for me personally to move through yeah. life, you know. But yeah, um, I don't know, man. Listen, uh, like it, it, yeah, and Palestine. There's a whole bunch of things, man. There's a whole bunch. There's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of. I think there's a lot of things with like the culture in general, which are like uh, uh, maybe misconceptions about Palestinian society that you can maybe remedy. 
Mm, I don't know. What, what are some misconceptions? I feel like uh, misconceptions. Uh, people think that we're very like, um, I don't know what's the way, way to put it. I, I mean, there, there's a stereotype. I mean, I guess that like the, the average Palestinian, like the, the Palestinians are like stupid. Like I guess in Israel because because we're Arab I guess like okay you know, Israel is that, like, all of the worst thing about Palestinians so I don't know like yeah when I said misconception like all of uh, the perception of Israelis of Palestinians is one big misconception uh, right? so, I don't I, I don't know like, you you're, cannot, it's, it's kind of there's no if you start you cannot end but maybe like more like if if you can like. like If you can tell me, like maybe something like misconception that you're thinking about, I can tell you. I like I can try to like talk about it. The thing is, it's hard for me to think about a misconception of like Palestinian because, like, usually, like I, if, as a Palestinian, when I talk to other people, they're not really going to tell me things. They're not outwardly going to tell me things like, oh, uh, like you know, maybe sometimes people will think that we're like we're like you know we're people that like you know we we're tribal people like we're like we're all yeah. Uh, yeah bedouin we all come from like a bedouin culture which is not yeah, true and there's nothing wrong with bedouin culture but like that i feel like a lot of people kind of associate us with like just saying you know oh you're palestinian you're kind of like this uh yeah. this desert you ride kind of like yeah, yeah you ride camels and all this sort of uh, shit arab uh, expert you the kedal that says like they're all uh, oh Mordecai, like, no listen listen you don't know how much The Mordecai Kadar plan. Oh my God, man! That, that thing where he talks about like, yeah, oh, listen, the best. Uh, so we got to put like tribal leaders. We got to put like tribal leaders. That's mm-hmm. what they were saying that they wanted to do with Gaza. That was like one idea that they're floating. They're saying, okay, we're yeah. gonna like have tribal leaders control like different parts of Gaza, and that's what Mordecai Kadar wanted to do with the West Bank. You know, he wanted to like, yeah. oh, we'll have like tribal elders and like, like, oh, this will understand. This will. It's so funny to imagine that because it's like something that you would think like a like. Like a French guy would make up, or like someone like for like a European that has that probably like watched Aladdin. He learned everything about. <laughs> but you know, but being he, from this Aladdin. guy, this guy, he tells people like me, I know Arabic, I know their society. You should believe me. What the fuck you know? is this guy talking about, man? I'm sorry. Like he's like, oh yeah, yeah, the travel. Like listen, in some like villages, you'll have. Um, You know, like maybe it's like someone that's like big in the family, an older member of the family that you'll have that he'll come and like he'll like between disputes and stuff, he'll deal with it or something like that. It's just like, you know, like, in, like, well, like a family, like, like all cultures and all okay. cultures. Yeah, like literally yeah. Like, sometimes I have, but like otherwise, yeah. like, yeah. like you're not going to have a person be like, oh, yes, like the head of the what, tribe. What is my tribal elder telling me what to do? Mm, you know what I mean? That's not This it's so just, funny, like even talking about like, it. Typical, typical Western chauvinism, really. Yeah, just, just yeah no, that, that, that's what it is. Yeah, you have the more record. Like, he's like, no, like he's like, I, I you know, hear me. He's like, you know, I, I know the Arabs. I know what yeah. I know what it's like. I've 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 ridden camels, too. <laughs> so our, <laughs> you know what I mean? our plan Alex, uh, Alex and mine's uh, plan is to speak to uh, enough Palestinians to be able to say, we know Palestinians. You don't know Palestinians. Yeah. We know them. We have spoken. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like we want to yeah. be the ones who, who say that we have spoken to Palestinians and we want to really speak to you and we want to really listen to you and really get to know each other. Yeah. Right. And not just make up stories about each other because this is stupid and it leads to what we are seeing now. Yeah. And It's also, stupid. And that's the thing. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff, uh, beliefs about Islam also. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> that's like, you know, I, I had a conversation with some uh, Muslim uh, girl from Afghanistan and I told her what they teach here about Islam, about this uh, uh, hadith that says that... Oh, yeah, the hadith. Yeah. yeah, so there is a one that everybody here quotes that says if you find a Jew that... In the judgment day, the Jew will hide behind the rock and the rock will say... The rock will say, here's the Jew. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. everyone, that's what they hear inside the mosque. That's what they tell them. They want to kill us, you know, like... And I told her about this and she told me, like, I don't know, like, she's a Muslim, but she was And like, she's a very well-educated Muslim. Yeah. Right? And she, she told me, like, there are so many hadith I, I didn't know about this one specifically. Uh, uh, I'll tell you this I did hear that I did hear that one specifically growing up but mm. it wasn't really like it was like that it, stuff like that was like told to us in a way it's like don't worry it's looking really bad now but you know one day in the future yeah. uh 
Don't worry, it's it's gonna look better for us. Don't worry, the rocks are gonna help us, and the trees are gonna tell us, oh look, uh, oh, oh come, there's a door behind me or something like that. And it's yeah. like, and it's like these hadith are like, they they only show up during very specific contexts and very specific situations. Right yeah. now, the people that are bothering us are Jews, right? And so they're like, okay, maybe we can find something, maybe somewhere that yeah. which, you know whether the hadith is. I don't even know if the hadith is accurate or if it's not accurate. Like no one knows because there's like different levels to these like hadiths it's like there's a whole like science behind it um so it's just like so you, know, you can find anything you can find anything it's, it's yeah. cherry picking that these guys do to like uh, uh uh display uh palestinians in a negative light and muslims in a negative light this is yeah. what they just do exactly i'll tell you something even funnier one time when we were I at, zero uh, yeah <laughs> when uh, when I was uh, a kid, we uh, we when I was a kid, we went on a trip to do um, Umrah to Saudi Arabia, which is like basically like a mini version, like a pilgrimage to Mecca and stuff like that. And um, you know, we go there and we came back, and on our way back, we got like all these. Uh, I don't have any with me. I don't know if you ever seen the Bismahs. They're like the little bead things that we have that you know people like usually. Yeah, yeah, they're you, like you, uh, little you, like prayer yeah. beads. You, yeah, yeah, you count, like, you, you'll, you'll say Yeah, things, you count yeah. the prayers, right? Exactly, you'll say okay, something, okay, you'll yeah, say, like, yeah. Alhamdulillah or something, and you'll, like, with count it 33 times with the beads, right? Yes, yes. And yes. one of the guys, one of the guys, um, one of the Israeli guys, when we're going through, we came in through Jordan, we was left through Jordan, we, uh, one of the Israeli security, when we, like, have to go across with Israeli security before we go inside the West Bank, they were going through our stuff, and they saw that we all came with this uh, these misbahas and he is saying oh you know why because there's some of them are like 33 and the other uh like have 33 beads and other of them have like 90 beads right and he was saying like you and, and t uh, he's like oh you know why the there's the, the women take the 90 beads one and the men take the 33 bead ones because women they believe that women have a lot more to uh ask forgiveness for yeah. than uh to repent for than the, the men do and i'm like listen to this guy I'm like what the fuck is this guy talking about like this is not, this is com yeah. Yeah, it's completely untrue untrue even this misbah the misbah itself is something that is um this is like something that was invented after like islam was fully solidified you know what i mean yeah. this is not something the prophet the prophet didn't have a prayer be it prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, didn't but have a what, prayer bead. what, what is know? the actual story what are the actual numbers and what do they represent no, they're they're just two different styles of the beads. Sometimes because okay. like usually you'd say you you you'd cycle through three p p prayers. You'd say like, uh, you'd say like Allahu Akbar. Okay. Let's say thirty three times, which is a scary word for a lot of people I know. But you'd say like Allahu Akbar thirty three times, and then you would say yeah. something else like Alhamdulillah thirty three times. Or, just so uh, people understand. Things. Just so people understand. Allahu Akbar yeah. means God is great, right? That's what it means. God is great. Yep. For that's what it means. For Zionists, these are some of the scariest two words that they can hear ever, ever, ever. It only means God is great. I yeah. personally an atheist. I do not believe in God, but I also am not scared of people saying God is great. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot be scared of this. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. It's really also, this is like happened even like, it's not Israel alone that does it. Like a lot, even it's popular in American media that like, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. usually when you see it. like, usually when you see like, like Arabs or Muslims chanting, they're like, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, and they're like, seem very angry and scary. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, yeah. it became this kind of thing where it's like being screaming Allah Akbar is associated yeah. with like an angry, scary, terrorizing Arab that's yeah. about to do something scary. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought but, like, you know, what images I have in my head from growing up from like uh, as an uh, Israeli child from Palestinians. So they always pick like the most threatening, uh, you know, uh, demonstration that you see like uh, Hamas leader said something and everybody's like, yeah, we're going like, to, ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, like these are the Palestinians. And then yeah. you were like, that's, that's what I have in my head from that, the television, television, you know? Yeah. It's part of the propaganda. Like... This is exactly what this... was done to the Jews in Germany. This is uh, the same thing. You you demonize exactly. uh, the people and uh, you allow people to... Uh, to just do whatever they want to this group of people. Yeah. Right. No, that's exactly what it is. And it's uh it 
I'm checking uh, to see uh, if we yeah. have any more questions that we didn't ask. Yeah, and how long? Let's see. Been? We've been talking we've been on. for, I think, uh, almost uh, two hours. Yeah. So I think uh, yeah, we that's... might want to, uh, to uh, say some final words because uh, I know I'm tired, but... Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is this has been fascinating. So we could go. I think we could go on for three hours. And no, that's the, that's the thing. That's the thing. Listen, I, I can I can talk for, forever. I don't I don't get tired of talking. So it's like if uh, yeah, uh, we we notice that you know I, I I said I said I needed to leave early so I could go to the gym at like five thirty. Yeah, it's already six seventeen over here. It's when just like uh, I can't I can't stop. I, I, I'm not gonna stop right now. But it's yeah. fun. I feel like we could talk about so much. Let Let us finish. Let us finish on a positive note. And I want to ask you. Uh, Yes. If you had a genie, okay, you met a genie, and the genie tells you, look, I am not all powerful, but I can push reality in like, uh, in like uh, a direction, certain. certain direction. I can influence what reality. What kind of genie is that? If it's, <laughs> it's a realistic genie. It's a realistic genie. He's, I, I he's a discount like... genie. <laughs> this is the way mathematicians ask questions. Okay? Okay? Yeah. You, will see, you will see the... the, 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 the why, why I phrase this question like this, okay? Mm -hmm. Please tell me what you ask of this genie and like, what is your dream for uh, uh, this situation, the Palestine, Israel, whatever situation? And yeah. how, what do you ask this genie to, to do to push in the right direction? I think just um, having people, uh, for, us, for specifically for the Israel-Palestine thing, um, question, I think um, I think it's the biggest problem. Is, I think is just getting people in politics that are actually this is extraordinary, extraordinary um, wish. But this is probably I probably need the full genie for this one. But like, yeah, okay, okay. I think I need uh, a uh, I I would need. Um, politicians that actually care that actually look at the average person that's yeah. not a politician or a millionaire or a billionaire as a human being yes and i think i think a lot of this is rooted in like a lot of the fact the reason why like people are just sitting idly by while this thing is happening is because there is a mass campaign that there is a mass campaign that um the certain people certain wealthy people certain people that have that um uh that have that are uh, economically invested in Israel or also economically invested to be in power in the U.S. are, it, it's not, it, they're incentivized to not care about the humanity of people. And I think having politicians or having a political sphere where people are, where things are made to, in the best decision for humanity or is in charge as opposed to what's in best interest of you know these um, business leaders or these politicians that want to stay in power so if I may, and you know extract more resources yes. from um, these poor people so if yeah. i may, uh, uh i yes. uh, hear what you're saying as you think that if we have true democracy in the world then things will be much better yeah, I hope so. Uh, I hope so. Um, I agree. True democracy. Yes, I, 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 I would like to hope so. Um, I would like to hope so. I, I, I think that's where I think I'm happy to settle on that point. But I'm also, you know, I'm also open to, you know, maybe hearing some other, other perspectives. Maybe you know, at the end of the day, I'm not really. A, I'm not a person that's like trained to think about these big political things. But like as as it's your average Joe, I think right? that's what would help. Also, yeah absolutely in a way like absolutely. okay we don't have the genie we have us yes and we spread the word um because the end people will have to push their politicians to yeah. change their views and stuff the, the genie he, is he, he, the genie is us this is this is the twist in the plot yeah. that the genie yeah. Is, you know? <laughs> yeah yeah and uh yeah i mean that's that but <laughs> the, the, the thing is man listen i have I have like I'm I'm a teacher. I, one of my students is Jewish. You know what I mean. And um, I think me as a Palestinian, what I try to do is just you know just be hopefully for this Jewish kid, he'll remember his fifth grade teacher as being a nice Palestinian guy that wanted what was best for him. Because I honestly do, you know. And then he's a, one of my students. I want him to be a good kid, and I want him to actually like remember me. Remember me in a positive way, as opposed to you know. 
someone that's not you know someone that's not um that like yeah. oh yeah that, like i don't know whatever like supports whatever you know belief that he could have you know what i mean where it's like next time maybe when he grows up and he thinks about like oh man these palestinians are really fucking crazy like uh, i can't believe it then he's gonna start thinking hey you know i I had a Palestinian teacher. He seemed pretty nice. Maybe they're not all bad. You know, something like that. That's how I feel like I can, what I can do on an individual level. Obviously, there's a lot more I could be doing. Yeah. I could be more active. I, I but, just you want know, to say, yeah. I just want to say that, uh, yes, you are a teacher and I feel like uh, you taught us a lot in the last uh, almost two hours. And I feel oh, like you. everything you said that you wanted to give uh, uh, this student of yours, uh, I, I feel like you gave to us and, and the audience completely. Mm -hmm. Oh, time. thank you. Thank you so much. That, that, that means a lot. You, you guys are very nice people. You, you guys are very nice people. And I, I'll say this. You guys are doing... I'm nice. Um, I'm nice to nice people. I'm not nice to Zion. Not, He's not, not, not even nice, man. Not, not even nice. Nice is not even a word I want to use because nice is just a whatever. It's just a cheap compliment. I think you guys are very uh, principled because you guys are in Israel. Mm -hmm uh doing this shit you know what i mean which you know obviously israel's a pretty safe place and there's not really much risk of uh you know like you being probably physically harmed mm -hmm. yeah. too much maybe not, i don't know you, you guys know yet. better than i do not yet not yet when 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 ah, yeah yeah but, but, but if it gets serious you know if it gets serious uh when there is such a risk you know do we have do we have a place in new york where we can uh, stay <laughs> absolutely absolutely okay, yeah, if you ever guys that. ever want to come to new york don't worry don't even worry about it don't ever worry about the, it the, the palestinian saving the jews what the <laughs> ironic twist you, of you, 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 want, you want to hear something even funnier yeah uh our, our, our uh tenants because it's like we have a like a, it's like a um a two-family house um our the okay. lady that lives under us is a 90 year old jewish lady oh, okay. <laughs> she's a 90 year old jewish lady but she's not like religious at all she's like completely yeah. like she's just jewish uh by name like you know she yeah. doesn't really like participate in any uh well yeah, she's, she's just like a 90 year old lady basically you know what i mean mm -hmm. but um yeah she's funny she, she's very funny um she, she, she says oh you should go if you go to if, if you go back to your country you should uh go look for my cousins my cousins live in israel uh, I'm, like, oh. <laughs> I'm like whatever whatever you want susan she, uh, i'm not i'm not gonna trouble you i'm not gonna bother you with all the harsh de re reality that we live in <laughs> let her live her but, fantasy yeah let her you know she's a nine-year-old she lady she's just like watching tv yeah like, she also believes in, you see you see when people don't know anything about about the they just assume they just assume that what we want is a dream is reality yeah you see so maybe our our dream is not so crazy yeah. after all maybe when, when she first when she first heard about what was going on uh like when October 7th happened and stuff like she's like, oh, why are they fighting? Don't they know if everyone dies, no one's going to get the land? <laughs> Which is... We, uh, we should learn from our elders. This is... Uh, this is uh, uh, you know what I mean? And this is just like, she probably like, probably has never done anything Jewish in her life. I don't... I, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, you know, it just goes to show what like the average, like as a person, like as a person that like, listen, like, has no understanding of what's going on that's what she defaults to you know yeah. what i mean that's the that's the the, the thought exactly. process that many, her mind Jew, many jews to. in israel are also not jews honestly yeah they're not they're not religious you know what i mean yeah. they're not they're like uh yeah, yeah they're which, which is you know basically basically the argument of zionists of of the secular zionists uh is uh there is no god and uh he promised us this land yeah and God promises us this land, yeah. yeah. And, and if he did exist, he, he would have promised us. He did promise yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, which is it's, it's, a, it's a funny it, thing to think. I, I'm, I'm you know. sure that if he does exist, he doesn't like yeah. what the Zionists are doing. What's yeah. going on? I'm, I'm yeah. sure exactly. I'm sure. No, uh, nothing yeah, God sure. would support this, guys. Uh, I, Absolutely. I, as we said in, in our podcast, they are breaking many, many, many of the Ten Commandments in what they are doing. Thou shalt not kill. No. Uh, thou shalt not steal. No. Uh, uh, thou shalt not uh, carry my name is in vain. No. Uh, th 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 thou shalt not uh, covet my neighbor's. Uh, yeah, covet, covet my neighbor's, my neighbor's <laughs> house, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, yeah. they, they and also, covered. and also, when you know they say don't worship the idols, you yeah. can you can claim that the flag and nationalism. Yeah, yeah nationalism is definitely. It's like you know, Islam also has a very similar perspective on idol and ide uh, idolatry, which is like idol worship. 
mm. where it's like you know like uh, another similarity between Islam and Judaism is like this emphasis on believing in one God you know what I mean and it's just like it's something that's both a common the, the, we, we call it shirk shirk when you associate partners with God or when you worship mm. other things other than God it's a big thing by us too and that's why there's like you know like like if you're like too nationalistic it might be considered mm. like you know shirk yeah. same way like but it goes to, but the thing is Zionism was not a Jewish enterprise it was like a european enterprise by people that happen to be yeah. jewish <laughs> you know what i mean yes. that you know they, they, they the judaism the religious ties to it like came up later because like if you look on yeah. early on a lot of the religious jews when Zionism they were against thing, it many of them were against it. they were against it the most the majority of them were against it and it wasn't until like you know like once israel's formed then like uh judaism israel became more integrated into judaism and jewish teaching where they try to like push it in where it's now it's like you know your, your average jew is probably a zionist yeah. but it's because of like you know all this like effort years by and years of indoctrination itself into judaism yeah years and years of introduction you know yeah exactly and, and zionism become like an identity so people feel like if you're say anti-zionist it's like being racist towards them and they truly feel that way yeah like uh <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's true. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that they feel that way, but <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm gonna have to be the bad cup here because I, I, I am thinking of our poor audience. Yeah, yeah. that just <laughs> wants us to free them. <laughs> yeah, because we've been going on. We, we are all people who will not stop talking. So yeah. please let us let us say that we will meet again and and talk more about these issues. And hopefully uh, we will be one step further in the plan to bring peace to the world. And uh, and we will learn more and more from each other. Yeah. And yes, I, uh, I just want to thank our audience. If any of you made it this far, yeah. way to fucking go. You, you yeah. are amazing. You have great attention spans. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, do, I do feel like this conversation was, was uh, fascinating. And uh, maybe just uh, closing remarks from uh, anyone, and then we will uh, uh, finish the episode. Mm. Okay? I don't know. I, I wish that you would come here and we yes. could uh, visit uh, your place in Ramallah. And, yeah, you and know. you can visit us and we can uh, sit together and have this. Uh, you, you gentlemen don't, ha don't happen to have like other passports other than your Israeli passport, right? I have a, you have a French passport, the bastard. Yeah. Okay. So, I can like come. I'm sorry, Alan. I'm sorry. No, but maybe we <laughs> can also come, come visit you in New York. And uh, make yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, if you like ever come in New York, in the same place and uh, talk about this. But hopefully, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this summer, if I uh, end, end up going, inshallah, I don't know how much of this information I should let out up here in the air because I don't know what's gonna happen. But like, uh, if I uh, if I do go, end up going this summer, uh, I can definitely. I can. I'm pretty sure. Like, it's. Um, I'm pretty sure they made it probably, I think it's a little easier now for call. American we'll try Palestinians to, see. to we'll go try to see the conditions. 100%, I'll reach out, I have your WhatsApp, everything. I'll definitely reach out, call, and if you guys are ever around, like, end up in Ramallah or anything like that, absolutely. If not, I'll come by wherever you guys are at. And then we'll see, we'll see what happens. If it works out, works out. If you guys are ever in New York, if not, if not, we can talk again later. And, Maybe. you know, like, uh, it, was very, it was very much a pleasure talking to you guys. Thank I'm uh, yeah. very Thank happy. Thank you so much, Muhammad. It's for very very nourishing for my soul knowing that people like you exist in Israel because I've had, felt, I've had my fill I've had my fill of uh, anti-Zionist Jews in New York I know they're out there there are a lot of them it's great but I'm happy to know that you guys are there in Israel like like yeah. you yeah. despite all the propaganda the hard money the hard work that the Israeli government has put into it did not work you guys, you guys on us have, it didn't work it did on not us. work yeah and yeah. we're not the, the it's not they're not a lot like us, but it's also not only the two of us. No, right? no, no. There, there are a few thousands no. of, of... No, of, obviously there's a lot. There's, I know there's organizations. Them. There's organizations like Betselem and all these yes, Yeshdin. Yeah. I know these organizations that do a lot of these work that document this uh, yeah. document this stuff. Obviously, I know there are like Israelis that like that even care about passes. But the goal is, is to get, you know, hopefully inshallah everyone <laughs> to be like yes. that, you know? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so thank you so much, Muhammad, for coming to uh, Yala podcast and uh, and making the time to talk to us and uh, just a fascinating conversation and and uh, such a pleasure. Absolutely. Um, uh, if anything, if anyone ever wants to reach out to me, uh, I don't really have any like professional social media platforms or anything like that. But 
You can add me on Instagram. Um, I don't you know can, if you can uh, push your, my name or whatever. To your Instagram on uh, the you, the the description of the video. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really make videos or anything. I usually just share news and stuff. Yeah, I usually yeah. just share news. So you know, if uh, yeah. you want to like see some of the stuff that I'm sharing, because like right now on Instagram, it looks seems like you know there's like a crackdown on a lot of the yeah. information that's happening, yeah, and it's like you. a lot of people. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Yeah, you know for sure, exactly. You know, so it's just yeah. like if you guys want to see maybe stuff that's coming from like from palestinian news organizations or stuff from like right. um yes. videos from yeah. anywhere else you know you can just always give me a follow or whatever and you know Amazing. It is. it'll work out thank you thank you guys so much it was a pleasure talking to you pleasure. thank you guys thank you, my friend it peace was, it was fun bye have a great day hopefully i'll reach out to you guys soon yes okay thank you. bye bye brother bye bye man